Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I was their number one son, <laughs> and they treated me like number two. <laughs> and I'm just a stupid corn dog. Corn dog, corn dog, corn dog. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. I can practically hear the glasses and uh, blazer on you from here. Mm -hmm. I I'm doing that thing where I blow wind from my bottom lip to like push the bangs out of my hair. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nathan, welcome. Uh, this is... The day after Christmas. Yeah. But I'm still in the Christmas spirit, yeah. so I'm glad this we're doing this movie today. Yeah, it seemed right. It it does. As we're recording this, it, I, I have already, you know, we're recording this earlier in December, but I, I've already started my Christmas movie viewings in earnest. Mm. Had a great weekend. Watched, uh, uh, w with my lady friend, we watched Anna and the Apocalypse. Ooh. We watched uh, Black Christmas. Ooh. We watched... Uh, yeah, it's a feel good stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> then this followed by It's a Wonderful Life. So Boy. just like, <laughs> what a day. This this has kicked off my my Christmas viewing list. Yeah. I haven't gone to my second movie yet, but this is starting it. What a start. What a relief to watch a good movie after last week's fucking fiasco. Well, uh, it, the different values of good, but yes, <laughs> I will I'll watch I will watch a Batman Returns a thousand times before I ever even think about the last week's movie again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which will go unnamed. We will not <laughs> no, never name that Voldemort movie. It's the Voldemort of the show. Yeah, 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 never again. Speaking of Voldemort, where's Mally? <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, last time I saw Mally, he was being chucked into a sewer, uh -huh. uh, into a river. But uh, I don't know. I don't. Uh, Mally just said he couldn't make it. He had some plans which uh -huh. seemed suspicious. Who would have thought <laughs> Mally had a brain to damage? <laughs> <laughs> great, great walking. I, this episode's going to be filled. <laughs> it, no, no. It, compared to what I could offer, uh -huh. it's great. Okay. Okay, fantastic. We we heard what that sounded like in the Dead Zone episode. It was not. It's not good. Oh right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The ice is gonna break. Mm -hmm. a return to walking. A return to a wintry walking. A winter walking. WW. A walking in a winter wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm so excited. I love this movie. I know. You said this is your favorite Batman movie before, right? It reconfirmed it last night. This yeah. is my this is bar none my favorite. The one I've seen the most. Sure. The one I rewatched the most. Like wow. yes, I like The Dark Knight. Yes, I like, you know, F Mask of the Phantasm. Uh-huh. I go to this one all the time. I love it. It's, see, I'm fascinated by that. And that's something I I've been really chomping at the bit to talk to you about mm -hmm. because this was sort of the forbidden Batman movie in my household. I that, think that's why I like it. It uh -huh. is. This is a dark movie. It's a very horny movie. It's so camp. Uh huh. It is. I mean, this is th maybe the most distilled Tim Burton on film outside of Edward Scissorhands. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, this is a, a sequel, basically to Edward Scissorhands. Like it's <laughs> sure. I, I, I don't, it's like if Edward Scissorhands had a brother, uh -huh. it would be Danny DeVito in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, I I've gone on record saying I don't too much care for Tim Burton. Sure. This is my favorite of his movies. Like. Like it's not even close. That's totally fair. My my favorite Burton is like the the least uh the least Burton esque one, mm -hmm. which is Ed Wood. I think sure, <laughs> like sure. I, I love that movie, but uh, yeah, I I, I kind of have the same thing where I'm sort of. I, I get a little tired of the style over substance and also just his fucking attitude. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that's why I like, I don't get lost in his normal aesthetic choices in this movie. Uh -huh. Like, I don't like stop motion and I know he's done some stop motion stuff. Sure. And well, he's put his name on other people's yes, stop motion stuff. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. So I don't get lost in the aesthetic here because I think it fits. Like yeah. this movie feels just, I don't know. I going to say something blasphemous, uh -huh. I prefer this movie more than Batman 89. So it, it's impossible for me to uh, be objective of course. in any way about Batman 89. Like sure. I, 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 talk, I was on an episode of the VHS Files that like famously went, I think, two hours and four 40 minutes Ooh. because I can't stop talking about how much I love that fucking movie. Sure. And I get it. I, it's a great movie. I just prefer this one. Well, in, in both movies, I see the cracks. Mm -hmm. I see that it's a mess. This movie only has one credited screenwriter, but you can feel the other drafts trying to punch their way through the ice. Sure. Uh, 
And and it comes down to this thing that I have about Tim Burton, where whenever he's adapting different properties, he acts like he's above them. Uh, yeah, there are there's I mean, there's that infamous quote from Kevin Smith where he said, Tim Burton said, anyone who knows me knows I would never read a comic book. Yeah. And when you read interviews with Daniel Waters uh, working on this movie, he was like, I hated Batman. I don't like comic books. I don't care what the fans want. Yeah. <laughs> Which I kind of appreciate in that they're they're going for it, they're doing their own thing, but it, it is also, it's clear from the first movie, and especially in this one, Tim Burton has little to no interest in Bruce Wayne slash Batman. I know. He's all about the grotesques. This is a Catwoman movie uh-huh. and a Penguin movie split down the middle. Totally. And at some points, it forgets <laughs> both of them exist. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> or it forgets the other exists. Because, or like, it introduces new rules yeah, and new motivations yep. between scenes. I mean, the... The reveal that Catwoman has nine lives is just dropped casually an hour and 20 minutes into this movie. <laughs> it's insane that there's supernatural magic occurring in this movie and no <laughs> one bad to die. And yep. no, no, pun intended, no one bad to die at this shit. Hey. It's, I, I, I don't know. You know why I like this movie more than any other Batman movie? What's that? It got away with it. Sure. This movie, like McDonald's had to pull the Happy Meal toys from this movie because of parents complaining about it. There is an <laughs> unbelievable quote so the los angeles times was like running angry letters from parents to mcdonald's Mm -hmm. and there was a letter dated june 27th 1992 with one of my favorite quotes i've ever read in my life why on earth is mcdonald's pushing this exploitative movie through the sales of its so-called happy meals has mcdonald's no conscience Boy, irony is dead. Like satire is dead. It's all dead. It's so fucking funny. (laughs) But but this movie, there's, you know why there's there's blood in this movie? Uh-huh. There's, Danny DeVito says the word pussy. pussy. Christopher, Christopher Walken, Walken says poontang. poontang. <laughs> 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 they got a, this, you, I know this is like a, a, a phrase that I cringe at when I hear, but you truly could not make this movie today. Yes, no, absolutely. And what's so funny is that that's another thing that kind of comes out of nowhere is the penguin is suddenly ex- exclusively horny at the hour mark. Uh, so fucking horny. Well, like it, That's never Oh. Been a, that's not a thing for his character nope. until he sees two women yep. and then he's like ah, my French flipper trick yeah I forgot I like women <laughs> I like the broads I'd like to fill her void oh, like, more. this is also a movie that is th- these performances are broad and insane they are going for it this oh. is uh, maybe a controversial uh, statement here oh boy a career best performance for Danny DeVito yes. I mean he is he is this is like almost Oscar worthy I is. swear to god it he's is. so fucking good in this movie hey, so I put it together last night Th- yes this is a campy movie yes but everyone involved knows the movie they're making yes. and it makes not only the performances feel more genuine and yeah. it makes the characters in this world like this world feels f- almost fully realized there's yes. a couple of issues i have with it but <laughs> i even think this is a, one of the career best for michelle pfeiffer i think she's fucking incredible in this movie she's unbelievable in this movie uh, keaton's having more fun in this one i was gonna say the weakest performance is probably keaton but he's he's given nothing to work with like Not, bruce is a ooh. non-character and so so keaton is resorting to doing some mugging he's uh-huh. doing some like uh, awkward mr mom stuff the bit where he sits down at the desk and chucks that report over at Christopher Walken oh, is it. like, I'm like, hell yeah, there's no way that was on the page. That uh-huh. is all MK. <laughs> well, I, I I clocked it. Bruce Wayne doesn't have a line until 35 minutes into the movie. <laughs> right. Batman doesn't appear until 14 minutes in. Yeah. And I don't think he has much of a line either, really, until he first meets the Penguin in the Batman costume. I don't think. It's, it's his first Batman line in the movie is when Commissioner Gordon, the worst police officer of all time is like oh my god the laziest motherfucker ever oh my god (laughs) he says it looks like the circus gang is back and batman goes we'll see and i'm like what do you mean we'll see you just (laughs) fought clowns God, there's so I, there's so much I want to talk. I yeah, took yeah. so many notes. I we gotta so we gotta get going. We gotta yeah, get yeah. going. I'm, I'm like one last uh, thing I'll say. Yeah, our relationship with this movie. Yes. Oh yes. Duh. Yeah. I think this is a situation where it's kind of like TMNT one and two. Uh-huh. It's like which one did you first see? Which one did you grow up with? Kind of thing. Which one did you have on VHS? Exactly. Yeah. And as someone who had both, TMNT two was the first one I watched, so I gravitated more to that one. Sure. 
since then I've come around to loving the first one a, a whole a whole lot. That was how I was too. I watched Secret of the Ooze so much, mm-hmm. and then I when I was like eleven, I think I got a DVD of the first one, and I was like, "This is like the best. This yes. is the best movie." <laughs> yes, and Batman Returns and Batman eighty nine that we had on VHS, but for whatever reason, I gravitated. I saw Returns first and gravitated to that. Wow, played the NES games and stuff. Uh huh. But and I think I've talked about this on the show before. Uh-huh. The real reason. And it's no surprise, as a young boy, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer does a whole <laughs> lot she sure for, does. for me. Sure. And I was discovering some new things about myself last night, too. Uh-huh. I was uh-huh. like, yeah. this is, uh, yep. I don't even know how to say it without being crass, but this is, this is, this is, this, this does it for me. This, <laughs> this is it. No, I, absolutely. I, I was trying to, I was trying to, I was having the same thoughts and saying things aloud like, uh, yeah, this was like a big deal for uh-huh. <laughs> Teen Nathan. Oh, I should mention, I should mention, I, Priscilla's never seen this movie. Right. We watched, I put it on last night and I was like, I, you're gonna, your mind's gonna explode when you, and yeah. she was losing it. Like, this was a ball for her. Yeah. Danny DeVito's little grunts, like, <laughs> she was like, I don't like this. This was, this was a first watch for Ashley too. And it just like fucking, like, she was like, I cannot believe uh-huh. this movie exists. I know. And, and by the end of it, she was just like, that is so much more entertaining yes. than it has any right to be. Yes. So for for me as a kid, I saw this in theaters opening weekend. Oh, you lucky bastard. Oh. I was too young to see the first one. The first one came out when I was a year old. Sure. But I had the VHS tape and literally watched it so many times that the box like disintegrated. Yeah. So I just had a tape of it like loose. Yeah. Uh, that I watched all the time. And then this one came out and I remember it's my first first my earliest memory of my parents covering my eyes during a movie uh-huh. <laughs> very specifically remember my mom like like throwing herself over me when Max Shrek's like obliterated body shows up at the end of the movie oh my god yes he's a literal skeleton with google eyes it's yes! incredible and it's- i remember uh <laughs> like very vividly being in the theater and when the penguin says that's just the pussy i've been looking oh for my god. i said oh my it god. i repeated it my dad was like don't say that <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. I, I've been walking around telling Priscilla I'd like to fill her void, and she is fill her void. She's not a fan. What? Like, oh, wow, <laughs> amazing that she doesn't think that's cool. Yeah, who would have thought? Yeah, but also as when Michelle Pfeiffer first get the costume, I was like Priscilla. I was like, she goes, I get it. She goes, you don't have to keep going. I get it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, but you don't understand. I was like. I, you you have to wear this costume at some point. <laughs> see, see, for me, I'm more of a Selena Kyle guy. We'll oh, get into well, it. I, I get that too. I get it too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but I, I. So for the longest time, we just didn't own this movie. Mm-hmm. I watched '89 over and over again. When Batman Forever came out, I got that on VHS as a Christmas present, like right when it came out. The Mask of the Phantasm got heavy play in my house. Mm-hmm. I mean, the animated series right around this time. Th- I mean, the animated series came out two tie into Batman Returns, yeah. which is why Penguin has that kind of grotesque design in the animated series, yep. even though he's portrayed as sort of like the wannabe aristocrat from the comics. Yep. yep. And so uh, it was just, it was one of those that like over time, I sort of filled in the the gaps in my head and was like, oh, well, that one was a bad one. Or that one was like <laughs> d- up too upsetting or uh-huh. gross or weird or scary. And so it was a long time. I didn't think I rewatched it until I was like maybe 12 years old and we found a VHS copy at a yard sale mm. and so i i rewatched it and was just sort of like taken fully aback by it because at that point you know we're well into the schumacher era and it's yep. as far away as you can get and say what you will about those movies they are a cohesive vision somehow and they're a lot brighter and more fun yeah but like this movie was just sort of like for the longest time I just kind of wrote it off as like the weird Tim Burton one oh. and it wasn't until I think maybe the Blu-ray release that I really gave it another watch and realized and I also think I was getting I was had a much greater appreciation for camp mm-hmm. and for uh, you know the art deco architecture and all this stuff and oh my like, god yes it is a and what's so amazing is it's not Anton I mean, Anton first the production designer the first movie uh, committed suicide after the first movie came out and mm. rather than keep those sets standing tim burton just hired some uh, bo welch to like kind of build off of that and so mm-hmm. it becomes this sort of more f- 
futuristic. It, it almost gels more with the animated series, that kind of Art Deco style. It does. That that first wide shot when we get the cars, yeah. this is 33 years later, that is straight out of the animated series. Like it's, 100%. It's incredible looking. I love it. And so watching it now, I, I still am just like, well, this is barely a Batman movie, mm-hmm. but boy, howdy, is it a fun sit. But also, people make the same comment about The Dark Knight. It's barely a Batman movie there, too. I agree. I, I, I'm i more of a Batman Begins guy. Fair that's enough. My co- that's my hot take about the Nolan movies. Fair, <laughs> hey, fair enough. I Last thing I'll say before we get into it is yeah. I miss when, I mean, it'll never happen again, but I miss superhero movies like this sets? i miss sets i miss low stakes sure i mean i loved the batman with Robert Pattinson. it's fantastic but ever since like we had to like completely go in the dark gritty route with batman begins we haven't gotten a campy superhero movie right like this is camp i don't know that we'll ever get a fun batman movie again it's upsetting yeah. like i really would love just just go for it just make it goofy you don't have to go Adam West. You don't have to go Joel Schumacher era. Like, Which just, is like, I think that's what Ben Affleck's solo movie was supposed to be. It was I, like this big, taking on all the villains kind of movie. And I kind of wish that we had gotten that in I an do alternate too. universe. I think he's a really good Bruce Wayne and Batman. I agree. I will say, he just didn't get the right material. I Yeah, I'd love to see him in a good movie as mm-hmm. that character. Me too. And it'll never happen. No, which is I upsetting. Mean, and I gotta say, we're recording this amidst a lot of like bummer Batman news, yeah. right? A lot of DC, like this is right after James Gunn has been like everything scrapped, basically. Yeah, which I I I, I understand. Yep. There's a there's a universe that barely holds together. You got to restart. But like we just found out that there was maybe going to be a Batman Beyond movie starring the lead actors of this film. I know that 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 I'm now I'm, that was the only news that came out besides Man of Steel two being canceled. Basically, uh-huh, that bummed you out. That bummed me out was yeah. them being like, oh, we could have gotten Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Keaton back, and I was like, you fuck it, you fucking ass. I mean, there are... Michael Keaton has shot footage as Batman for three films, one of which has been scrapped, one of which they deleted his scenes, mm-hmm. and one of which stars a, a terrible person, and maybe... I don't know when the... I don't know if The Flash can come out. I don't understand. That, that movie will... I'm, I'm putting it now. That, that movie will never come out. No. It's, it's worse than The New Mutants at this point. It's never coming out. Yeah. Don't even get your... Don't hold your breath. No. It's never coming out. No. And I don't care. Right. I don't no, care No, same. Either. I just... I was excited to see Michael Keaton again. And yep. the fact that they've shot three different movies and it's just not happening is insane. It's a curse. It is. It's a, I mean, it, it, the same thing with him not coming back for Batman Forever. Right. It's a cur- like making Batman movies are centered around the Bat- Michael Keaton, Batman, Bruce Wayne version. Yeah. It's never happening again. No. And uh, and Ugh. also we're recording this uh, a little over a month after the uh, the passing of Kevin Conroy. Yeah. The, I mean, who we talked about. Has it really been a month already? Yes. Holy shit. We talked about at length in our Mask of the Phantasm episode uh, last year, but just like the, the greatest, the best to ever do it. Yeah. The definitive Batman, Kevin Conroy. Uh-huh. Okay, well, now that that's not a bummed out. Uh, now that I've brought the room down, let's talk about this <laughs> monstrosity. Let's do it. So the year is 1992. It is three years after Batman 89. Uh, the director, as we mentioned, is Tim Burton. The movie stars three big ones uh-huh. that I've already talked about, but Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, and Michelle Pfeiffer. The movie had a budget of $80 million and grossed $267 million worldwide. Uh-huh. Currently sits at an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes and was nominated for Best Visual Effects and Best Makeup at the Oscars. Wow. Not surprising. The no. penguin is haunting. Yes. It, <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- that was honestly a huge reason why my parents were like, we're not buying this movie. Mm-hmm. Is the penguin is not only making like tons of sexual jokes, but he's always just got black shit coming out of his mouth. The bile is, uh, it's so extra, but I, <laughs> I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. It's, it's so, the sharp teeth, the yeah. sunken eyes, uh, his little penguin ass. Like, it's, <laughs> yes. It's, it's again Oscar worthy performance. Like, it's unbelievable. He should have been nominated. You like, made a superhero movie where the villain is the elephant man. I essentially, know. like what the fuck? I know. And <laughs> gives and gives a patent speech. It gives like, a patent speech and also flips uh, the elephant man speech. I know. Yeah. I, like I, in some weird world where if like Heath Ledger had won for the Joker and the Dark Knight, and then this movie came out afterwards, uh-huh. Danny DeVito one hundred percent would have been nominated. Sure. Like, we didn't take superhero movies seriously until the dark knight so no. it's it's unfortunate but yeah i agree this is an insanely good weird performance right. that it, 
he just went for it and he fucking delivered. Yeah. And I'm so happy he did. Well, and that, that even wasn't even the original plan. Yeah. Like they started production with the idea for a movie just called Batman two, mm-hmm. which would have picked up immediately after the first one. Yeah. And Vicky Vale was going to be in it. There was going to be a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Sam Hamm's idea for it was it was going to be all about two face and uh the original there was also like this subplot about people like uh, were obsessed with batman now mm-hmm. and were selling pieces of the batwing that crashed at the end of the first one and, yeah. and i love i love all of that like and this movie still kind of really leans into merchandising is evil right like yeah. this movie is like the most anti-franchise superhero film i've ever seen i would have loved a third i like i just would love have loved tim burton keep doing this where it's like it's not a sequel uh-huh. it's just another batman movie oh and it just- yeah happens to be in the same place yes. like there's no continuing thread i kind of would have liked that like just the adventures of batman you're not even joking right like no. this movie <laughs> no no i mean like this movie is barely a movie also yeah. like it does not have a three-act structure Mm-mm. we're just spending a few days in gotham with these guys and i think you're right i think i mean that's one of the reasons why you know they just kept recasting him in the next couple of movies because why not this is our james bond we're yeah. just gonna see batman fight people for a while yeah i it, it's basically like an episode of the animated series like uh-huh. just for adults right i mean this is pushing an r rating yes. almost like yeah. it's insane what they got away with it's just insane. well well, it's because Tim Burton didn't like Sam Hamm's script. The studio wanted the Penguin. Burton wanted Catwoman. And then Burton also was like, look, I made you half a bill for the last movie. Yeah. So let me do whatever I want. And they were like, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, you know what movie I liked? Heathers. Mm-hmm. That guy should write a Batman movie. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, I've also seen uh, The Cabinet of <laughs> Dr. Caligari. And oh, sure. All this other... Like, this movie is so bizarre. It's it's pulling from so many different areas. And yes. And it doesn't work, no. but it's still fun. It's still a fun time. A microcosm of why this movie... How this movie operates, like, logically and from a design perspective is... Max Shrek, okay, first of all, a character played by Christopher Walken, who looks like a cartoon character, Uh has like this insane wig, giant eyebrows, uh, runs a department store uh, chain called Shrek's, and his... He's named after the lead actor from Nosferatu, Nosferatu. Yep. and his logo is a cat for no uh, reason other than Catwoman exists in this movie. It's, it's Felix the Cat if Felix the Cat had a coke addiction. <laughs> yes. It's an awesome logo, but it's like, why a cat? Why, why a, cat? a cat other than- You like chihuahuas, apparently. Why, yeah. why a cat? We never see Geraldo his chihuahua. We, no, we do. We do? No, we do, we do. Yes, it's, uh, as soon as she says that, he turns around and looks, and it's uh, it's- Taxidermy on top of the filing cabinet. Holy shit, I missed that entirely. I'll pull it up for you. I'll pull it up for you in a minute. Wow, that's amazing. Why don't we go back and, and revisit the trailer? Because I don't think I've seen this since I was a kid. Yeah, let's do it. And was this, remind me, it was either this one or Forever, I can't remember, uh-huh. or maybe even 89, when they were doing tie-in commercials with like Diet Coke? Diet Coke, oh, I was talking about this yesterday. The oh Diet God. Coke commercial was on the VHS for Batman 89. Yes. And it's Alfred like calling the grocery store yes. and just being like this black car will come pick up a diet coke like it's, uh-huh. <laughs> it's insane. i remember watching that commercial so much like that and uh, um there was a commercial with bugs bunny and daffy duck hawking the the warner brothers store yep. catalog <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this as much as i love that new line cinema logo uh-huh. anytime i see an old warner brothers one and bugs bunny pokes out from behind yes. the logo it's oh so good it's a good time yeah all right, but let's revisit this trailer, and uh, I'm curious to see how they marketed this movie, because I do not remember this trailer at all. Yeah. Oh, and we got to talk about this score. Oh, I, I got lots of notes about it. Down here, Jungle. It's time for me to ascend. From the sewers of Gotham, a new villain emerges. God, that Don LaFontaine uh, narration, too. Mm-hmm. So I crash. God, this fupa is out of control. <laughs> we also have to talk about how he's essentially playing Frank Reynolds in this. <laughs> I'm a garbage man. I'm down here in the zoo as I eat. I get you garbage. I know. I wrote that down too. I want to see some boobs. <laughs> This is like an 
it feels like an old trailer, yeah. like from like the seventies. Well, like the first Batman movie trailer was just a sizzle reel, essentially, no dialogue, just the score. Hey, stud. Oh, we had something together. We do. What an odd trailer. Yeah. Long takes. Oh my, I cannot believe that made it the trailer. The tongue. The, the, her licking the mask. Oh. He plots a foul reign of destruction. My dear penguins! Jesus Christ. Oh my god, they put the remote controlled penguins in the dark. And in this, the third act was rewritten by Wesley Strick, who was also eventually went on to work on uh, the Nick Cage Superman movie that didn't get made. Hmm. Batman has so many gadgets that would only work for one specific thing. Yep, yep. You're getting all of the action beats in this trailer. <laughs> you missed. It's also interesting of like, the Joker was a clown, uh -huh. and now Penguin's goons are clowns, basically. Right. Circus freaks. Cut out the casual murder. Yep. Looms its greatest hero. What? It's so crazy because, like, at this point, uh -huh. Michael Keaton did the original. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer had done Scarface. Danny DeVito had done Once a, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is a massive movie. Yeah. Especially with how much success the first one had. Yeah. And then, man, I, I couldn't, I wish I could have been allowed to, like, see this day one and, like, fully appreciate this movie. Cause, like, and kind of wild that, like, like Keaton did not get, he got second billing in the in the first movie. Yeah. So like this is his movie mm -hmm. uh, in in a way that the first one wasn't. And it's just it, I I don't know. I it's so funny that he gets top billing and then he's also maybe like the character they care the fifth most about in the movie. It's it's not a Batman movie. It's it's a Catwoman slash Penguin movie. It's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. I would argue Max Shrek is the main character of this movie Almost. because everything depends on him. Almost. But look, right there, there's the twelve. Oh my god, there he is. Yeah, he he even when she mentions it, he looks back and, and sees That's it. That's so funny. Yeah. God, he's got uh what's his name? Arlie Ermey. Yes. Yeah. His eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. No, he looks like a drawing. Like it's insane. Okay, we, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now because I I could not help but notice the parallels. Uh -huh. And I'm sure, you know, you probably noticed the same thing, but Max Shrek in this movie uh -huh. is okay. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how best to word this. Oh boy. Max Shrek in this movie is what Donald Trump uh -huh. thinks he is. Uh -huh. But when we see the penguin, quote unquote, running for mayor, right. that's more what Donald Trump is actually like. So here's the wild thing mm -hmm. is this movie, Max's plan hinges on the idea that like no one would ever knowingly vote for a corrupt businessman mm -hmm. in a, to be to hold public office. So he needs to have this puppet, you know, candidate. Uh -huh. And then also the end of the movie posits that if we hear a political candidate say awful things mm -hmm. everyone's gonna change their minds about them yep so there's so <laughs> many there's so many parallels uh -huh. there's saying horrible shit on a hot mic yeah there's this one blew my mind putting kids in cages yep i i could i might i forgot that was a thing and yeah. my jaw dropped just and then like there, he Penguin might as well have said I could shoot someone on in Gotham Square and no one would blink an eye uh -huh. and he fucking does he does he pulls a gun out of <laughs> yeah he shoots at the at the crowd yeah it's ins like I think genuinely if he wouldn't have done that part of it yeah even with the hot mic he probably still would have vote got voted yeah he would he would have won he has rallies in this movie uh huh he he's trying to like campaign outside of election season yes. like. Yeah. It it was kind of fucking crazy, like, how many... He's doing a misinformation campaign yep. against Batman. Yeah. Yep. Totally. It was wild how much similarities there were. And you remember when, when Donald Trump hacked the Obama mobile? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his little uh, toy ride you see outside of Kmart. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and... I, I just, he's groping uh -huh. like the women when he's putting the buttons on them. Yeah, it's a, he, it's so, it's so upsetting. It's such an upsetting character. It's so crazy just how similar all the, and yeah. then like, he, he bites a guy's nose that gushes blood. Uh -huh. He makes this, uh, a sexual harassment joke about the, the other woman. Yeah. And then 
Shrek is just like, uh, let's make a mayor. Yeah. Don't worry, we got it. We got this. I'm and like, he speaks mostly in sound bites uh-huh. like when, once he becomes like the candidate. I mean, there's no reason for for the penguin to turn around and scream burn baby burn unless you're planning to put it in a trailer. Oh like. my god. <laughs> and they and the fact that the penguin not like the fact that this movie references the Rotstock fire. Like Right. It, fucking crazy yeah <laughs> yes fucking crazy like and the fact that the penguin we didn't even know what that is like there's so many plot holes just with like the penguin himself uh-huh. which i'm okay with because this movie fucking rules like <laughs> yeah how did he survive that long why did the onesie he was in as a baby stretch out to him uh-huh there's no fucking way he's only 33 in this movie <laughs> no absolutely not oh. oh that's the funniest thing is he gets sent down the river like he's moses, moses and then we jump to his jesus yep. here <laughs> and then also so as Ashley, I think, put this perfectly, where she was like, the first movie is like a fun stunt show. Mm -hmm. This one's like a dark ride at the amusement park. Yes. (laughs) Where you're just, you're just like looking off to the side and oh, there's the animatronic Christopher Walken. Oh my God. There's just so much good stuff in here. Like uh, we start with Pee Wee Herman, a cameo. Doesn't have any lines. And and Diane Salinger with him too. Both of the leads are both from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes. This comes out a year after he gets caught in the the porno theater. Right, right. And the movie still comes out. Like, uh-huh. he's not, like, that. I don't know if that could even happen today. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of why, again, they got away with it. That's, That's my right. whole platform is look at, just look at this movie. <laughs> just look at it. Just it's, look at it. There's blood, there's bile, there's sexual innuendos. It's... It's fucking, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. And we got, I mean, we, I think the only way we can even like start to put this into words at 35 minutes in is to just go, <laughs> is to just go from the beginning, right? Yeah. Like we, we have, we have the, the cobble pots, L- little Oswald eats a cat in his crib. So okay. he's already obsessed with pussy from like day one. The fucking, the fucking doctor coming out and just holding back his vomit. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Whoa!" laughs> it's like, it's just, a, it's just, a, he just has, weird hands yes that's it like that <laughs> And, and, a, and, a, and a presumably a hooked nose. Yeah, yeah. But like, I, from the beginning, this has a fully different tone from the first movie. Uh-huh. I mean, these two are like the, the little fake polite Merry Christmas nod that they do when yes. they're like going to throw their child overboard. Dude, this movie is dark as fuck. Like, yeah. first of all, the aesthetic is incredible. The snow with the gothic architecture. Gorgeous. The organ. Yeah. In the, the, oh, the score is, this is Danny Elfman's best work. It's he put his whole elf pussy into this he because, did. like, I he swear did. to God, I, I, I worship at the altar of the Batman '89 score, mm-hmm. and every time I watch this movie, I remember, oh, this one's better. Yes, it's a better score. It's the best one. It is the best. Yes, and it's it's the score I can pinpoint from the first two seconds with the low horns even the batman march has been like redone Mm -hmm. and given like extra percussion and there's just like uh there it's it is a yeah it's an an incredible score all the choral stuff is so good Uh uh-huh it's basically a silent film here at the beginning yeah and for the like the cold opening takes a long time, but it's so fucking dark. This is a superhero movie where we watch the credits play over an abandoned child yeah. floating through the sewers. Through the sewers <laughs> that could fit the space shuttle in it. One hundred percent is massive. Yeah. <laughs> and I I don't know, man. I Danny Elfman's score, I it's the best Batman theme for me. Yeah. And it's so iconic that like he just redid it for Spider-Man. Like yes. you hear it. I I heard it this time watching. I'm like, yep. oh, this is he just reworked this for Sp-. and it worked for that movie too. Yeah, but that was one of my beefs about that score. As great as it is, is I'm just like, it's kind of a Danny Elfman's greatest hits mm-hmm. in some spots. Mm-hmm. That that it, what the best the best Spider-Man piece he does is the Doc Ock theme. Like yeah. that shit slaps. <laughs> and I'll I'll say something that many people may not understand or maybe maybe not even agree with, but I think this score is so iconic uh-huh. that but one of the the my favorite black metal bands, Demi Borgair, I'm uh-huh. pretty sure they just ripped it off for one of their songs. Oh wow! Progenies of the Apocalypse is it's got Danny Elfman all in that score in it because wow, they use a okay. lot of orchestral parts in it. But yeah, yeah. If you ever heard, li- ha- you know, if you never heard it, go listen to that song. I'm yeah, you, go check you, it out. You might you might understand. But this opening fucking kicks ass. Yep. Like I said, the the visuals are incredible. The score is incredible. It's so fucking dark and like. 
this the little baby scream as he goes over the waterfall down to the sewer mama yeah is it's scary it's like haunting. this movie is yeah. scary as yeah fuck. yeah and not for nothing but Pee Wee herman and uh his his, his lady there uh, uh maybe don't put your child in a cage right. to begin with maybe <laughs> maybe that's not setting him up for winning <sighs> when he's already down sure by being deformed <laughs> Not parenting of the year is my my point. Right. And uh and we I mean we flash forward to 33 years later. Exactly 33 years. That had to have been a decision, right? right? Yes. Like it we got to make the Jesus comparison. Totally. Yeah. And it's time for his ascension mm-hmm. and to yeah, take his place and uh Alfred Pennyworth being mean to the world's oldest paper boy. <laughs> this uh, they don't give you an, an exact year here. They play fast and loose with it, yeah. but if we're taking this as present day, it's yeah. 92, 33 years later, we're in, what, the 60s? Sure. Like, this kid is somehow still being a newsy from the 20s. Right. Like, I don't know why. Well, that's the thing I, I love about Burton's Gotham City and like to and also Bruce Tim and Paul Dini's Gotham City from uh, the animated series mm-hmm. is that we get those sort of, it's the 90s, but everyone's wearing big coats and carrying Tommy guns mm-hmm. and there's blimps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so I, first of all, I love the aesthetic of Gotham in this city. Like absolutely atlas pulling levers and shit everywhere yeah. like they pl- they it gets too far with the schumacher stuff but yeah. it looks great in this movie my only problem my well, two problems my my first my big problem is we only ever go to the square like yeah <laughs> it's this i mean it's it's the it takes the place of uh the uh the monarch theater from the first movie mm-hmm. like we, we at least get like two more sets uh-huh. <laughs> but i mean this is the james bond uh soundstage they're at pinewood mm-hmm. and and so they they built these I, I i just love that i can tell that they're standing in a place yep that has been constructed for this movie it's artificial but it's cozy mm-hmm. like I, I love seeing something tactile and people like to rag on these movies for being dark and dour but this movie's so fucking colorful it it's is l- lit to perfection it is so well lit it's it's not so overly saturated that it's like bright, bright colors, but the colors you do get, like when you see the Christmas present yeah. coming out, the Trojan horse Christmas present right. later, it is, it's so creepy, yeah. but also like so bright and colorful that it's, sta- it's so good. Yeah. Like the aesthetics of this movie are so good. But my second biggest problem oh boy. with Gotham is I think it's, the population is about mm, 200 people tops. Uh-huh. Like why? <laughs> The lighting of this Christmas tree, there's like 50 people there. Uh-huh. It's so insanely small compared to the wide. Ch- yeah. Like the sewer system is designed for New York City and it's like, oh, this is like a small town in Idaho or something. This movie would have you believe that most of the population of Gotham City is reporters. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. There's so many microphones on the, the, the stage whenever anyone's giving a press conference. Right. So we 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 cut to this this meeting with Max Shrek and the mayor, and Max's son Chip gets introduced. And this guy, Dad, this guy is just doing a walk in depression. That's Dad, all he's doing. So uh, one of my besties and I will send this scene to each other anytime we watch this movie because we're obsessed with the sheer audacity. It's it's so funny. I. Do you think Walken like was in on that? He like understood that he was doing a Walken impression. Like, what the fuck is this? Do you know who that guy is who plays uh, Chip? Isn't he a bodybuilder? He is. He's also he was Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw remake from two thousand three. Wow. Okay. Okay. (laughs) That makes sense. He's a big guy. Yeah. He's also in like the second episode of Firefly. He's the dude that Nathan Fillion kicks into an engine. (laughs) Wow. Okay. It really, yeah, so he's like been a touchstone for me, weirdly. Wow, okay. So we should talk about Max's plan, right? Uh-huh. So Gotham has a power surplus, as the mayor says, uh-huh. and Shrek is trying to open up a quote-unquote power plant because he says you can never have too much power, which just feels like a Trump quote. Right. But his actual plan is he's going to use it as a capacitor. Sure. And basically, he's also kind of Martin Shkreli in this instance, because like it, he's basically doing the Dominic Green plan from Quantum of Solace. Like instead <laughs> yes. of water, it's electricity. Yeah, he's doing the he's pulling a Rango on us. Yeah. I'll get all the electricity and then I'll sell it back to you. Right. But then Selena comes in and says, I have uh, you know, I, I have an idea or at least a kind of a question. She was she pulls the uh the thing you hate at con Q and A's where she's like, I actually have more of a more of a comment. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then we don't ever hear it. Right. <laughs> I have no idea what her question is. But yeah, Shrek says we haven't properly housebroken her, Ugh. which 
A, it's a very sexist comment, but also B, kind of foreshadowing the fact that she's, quote unquote, an animal, like a cat. Like, we have a house broken her. But also, like, this movie, like, does a she's all that thing where yep. I'm like, is there a second I'm not supposed to think that Michelle Pfeiffer isn't Michelle Pfeiffer? Like, I know. You know what I mean? They try. I mean, they make her very, like, mousy. They, they put the glasses. Big and the- glasses and pencils in her hair. Yeah. I mean, but they might as, I mean, it's that not another teen movie thing, right? Yep. Where they're like, oh, she's wearing a smock. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so you prefer this or or do you prefer when she's already like converted when she when she comes back yeah. uh into the meeting uh between Bruce and Max later and she's, and she's being a girl boss right she's got the poofy hair <laughs> yeah. and and her collar is stretched up to heaven yeah okay i get it I, yeah. i'm not a big fan of the poofy hair i like this kind of secretaryish look and i love the masquerade look at the end of the movie oh my god the masquerade she is a bombshell yeah. oh my god so, did you get a look at this? Whenever <laughs> Shrek is talking, uh-huh. and he's got a bunch of framed photos up behind him. Uh-huh. Did, did you see this at all? I might have missed it. Okay, let me see if I can find it here. I'm going to tell you what it is, though. Uh-huh. He's got, they, they did, like, some Photoshop work, like some Forrest Gump stuff, uh-huh. where he's got framed photos behind him of him meeting celebrities. Oh, no, I totally missed this. Yeah. Dude. Let me run, let me run you down the list of people I kn- I can definitely identify. Oh, fuck. Okay. So there's Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> him shaking hands with him. Uh huh. He's sh- he's shaking hands with Elvis. Okay. He's shaking hands with probably the least surprising Reagan. Okay. Sure. And the last one is a young Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> what? I I I never noticed it until this watch. I disagree. In my head canon, he's shaking hands with a young Victor Freeze <laughs> who's just <laughs> just started to develop his cryotechnology. You know what? That's kind of brilliant that you can tie that stuff together <laughs> by the way this shot of uh of of him with his hands on the grates oh, and watching beautiful. the tree lighting ceremony love all of that it's, the framing is incredible like yeah. it just i don't know man this is the only tim burton movie that i think looks this fucking good and yes. like has this much of a clear vision it's gorgeous it's it's incredible and and again more trump stuff he starts throwing presents out like they're paper towels oh my god you're right <laughs> <Max> god <tried. laughs> yeah Santa Claus, afraid not. That's a great, um, like, let me just wing this speech. That's another thing Trump does a lot going yeah. off books. Remind me to take it out on what's her name. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's usually, like, hey, remind me to berate that woman when I get out of here. Right, right. <laughs> but, like, if Trump could have met Ronald Reagan and got a picture, which, which maybe he did, like, that's exactly who he'd have framed on his wall. Sure. It's so, it's so clear to me now watching this as a 32-year-old. Like, that's been through the rigmarole of 2016 onward. But, oh, 100%. Yeah, no, the the, the, the tossing the presents. Like, he's, he's his line is, I'm just some schmuck who got lucky. Yeah. So, sue me if I want to give back. Give something back. Yeah. Oh, so cringe. Oh, uh, the, the fact that anyone buys this shit. Oh. What is he? He says, I, I wish I could put joy and unconditional love <laughs> wrapped in a big bow. Uh, and then the giant Christmas present being wielded like a Trojan horse is maybe the <laughs> funniest. It's somehow, again, it's somehow so fucking ominous and creepy. Yeah. And everyone just, all these clowns and these circus gang members just exploding out of this this uh, this giant present. One lands in the tree. The design of the like skull head with the bobbly Googly eyes, eyes is yes. so good. <laughs> it's so good. And just man, the red circ- the the red triangle circus gang as they're called. Uh-huh. So there's a oh, we got to talk about it, dude. There is the fucking devil is in this movie. Yeah, the devil is in this movie. He sets a toy store ablaze uh-huh. by breathing fire. And he bre- yeah, this fire breather. And then uh, it, apparently, in like, there's a scene that was cut from the movie where the the gang is like burning a store that's specifically Batman merchandise, uh, which I think is really funny. Yeah, I believe that. But this, as a kid watching this, because I'm like six or seven, maybe even eight when I'm watching it for the first time, this uh-huh. shit gave me fucking nightmares. Oh, like, it's really? So, but in a good way. Like, Did it I, help that Batman immediately murders that man? God damn it. Okay, so yeah, we got to talk about this. So Br- Bruce's little brooding room with all his lights? Well, even before that, uh-huh. because one of the characters in this movie that doesn't get any screen time at all is the, the uh, Jim Gordon. Oh, like, sure. He's in maybe... Two and a half scenes? Yeah. Barely in the movie at all. And in one of those scenes, he's showing confidential murder evidence yep. on a on television. Of an ongoing case, yeah. 
Yeah. But um, the giant guy that Batman then murders later on yeah. throws a sled at a police car. It, <sighs> Jim Gordon's in it. Right. He immediately gets on the radio and says, what are you waiting for? Get the, get the Batman on the phone. I'm like, <laughs> he, he says, hit the signal. Do you want to try any police work? No. Like any at all? Not at all. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They've gotten lazy. Yeah. The Gotham PD has gotten so lazy. But yeah, th- this, this weird... The fucking uh, like mirror system that Bruce Wayne has to like shine the bat signal into his room. <laughs> sure. Number one, it's it's gorgeous looking. Like it's so cool. The shot of him st- of him just standing up with the bat signal behind him, and then the wide shot uh-huh. of the the office he's in. It's straight out of a comic book. And like, I like the implication that when Bruce isn't Batman, he's just disassociating in his office like yeah. he's just looking into the corner and then he's activated like a fucking sleeper agent he doesn't know what to do yeah like he's he's like an alien human hybrid and we see that through the rest of the movie because bruce has no fucking clue how to talk to women nope. he can't have a conversation with another human being nope. without grandstanding yep i mean it's the kind of that thing from the first movie where vicky vale asks uh uh, do you know which of these guys here is Bruce Wayne? And he's just like, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Batmobile in this movie, I've always thought this was the coolest design. It's the it is it's the best Batman design. Yeah. Batmobile design. Yeah. It feels like something out of like uh the World's Fair from like the twenties and thirties. Like totally. this very elongated. Yeah. It's got like bat wings for like a spoiler. Yes. It's yeah, this and the and the animated series are my favorite Batmobiles Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. And I do like oh look, here it is. Oh yeah, the photos. There's yeah. Arnie, there's Sammy Davis Jr. Uh-huh. This one appears Reagan. I couldn't tell who these two were. Uh-huh. And that's Elvis, and I couldn't tell who that was either. Funny thing, I think I remember reading Burton originally wanted Sammy Davis Jr. in Beetlejuice. And there was like some, like the studio was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he he could have been a good uh, uh, Harvey Dent. Oh, sure, sure. If Billy D would have backed up. Yeah. So yeah, Batman arrives at Gotham Square that sets the devil guy on fire. After using this like hydraulic lift to turn the Batmobile around. Yeah. Tim Burton did it first. Yeah. Fucking Nolan, eat your heart out. Yeah. He did he does the reverse. Oh, there's a few things in this movie where I'm just like, oh, Christopher Nolan totally <laughs> bit off of this. Mm-hmm. So Batman gets out of the Batmobile <laughs> to rescue Selena Kyle. He he rips a slab of concrete out of a building wall with his yes. hands. When he shows up to fight this this clown that's got her, mm-hmm. he's lit like Morticia Adams with yes. just the one bit sliver of light in his eyes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Batman has got. He's so like he so doesn't have time for anything in this movie. No. He's so and and Keaton, you know, I. I you know, people are always like, he's the best Batman. I think he's fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know. In this movie, he doesn't get much to do. Right. But he is very pouty lips. Oh, sure. He is scrunched into this cow. Uh-huh. Like, it is as much form-fitting as Catwoman suit is, this uh-huh. cow. Like, he's just shoved in there, like, to the point where it's, like, pushing his cheeks together. <laughs> and it shows whenever he has to fight. Yep. Because that motherfucker can't move in that suit. He's stiff as hell. He is so stiff. And, and it makes sense when, like, Nolan mentions later in Batman Begins, oh, you want to turn your head. Yeah, You want to be able to turn your neck, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I love that, too, that after Batman deals with this guy, every other member of the gang just leaves. So uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It is dead quiet after this. And uh, Selena gets the taser with the little cat ears on it. Sure. Which I thought was cute. She tases this guy that's already down. <laughs> and the, the taser comes back in one of the most baffling moments of the movie. Oh, you're talking about the ending, right? Yeah, yeah. I love it. I fucking love it. I love it, too. <laughs> it's nonsense. It's nonsense, but, but I, I love it. it. Yeah. That's that's the that is the log line for this movie. Yeah, that would be my pull quote on the box art. It's fucking nonsense, but I love it. Uh, also nonsense. Gotham uh, has a just closed Arctic theme park that's mm-hmm. never been demolished, never mm-hmm. been like reused for anything. Yeah, and uh, a whole bunch of supervillains are living there. And I thought you were going to say, speaking of nonsense, the one great he falls through a Scooby Doo trap. What he the does. fuck? What? The one part in the city he shouldn't stand, uh-huh. and he managed just to find it uh-huh but i love that it's just this movie doesn't care it's like yeah he fell through a trap door so what yeah i fucking deal with it yep yeah christopher walken sees danny devito as a penguin for the first time and almost he has to hold back vomit he's like Ooh. i think the word you're looking for is ah! <laughs> which is great great first line great introduction 
And also, the truth. I would probably be screaming, too. 100%. Yeah. Uh, it's so good. Yeah, the black bile coming out of his mouth. Ugh. Hey, Max, I'm Fred's hand. Yeah, Fred. I wrote down Fred's dead, babe. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. So, you know, Penguin brings Shrek down here. Right. And he's like, you know, I've got all this dirt on you. Everything you flush down the toilet, I find. You flush it, I, I flaunt, flaunt it. it. Great line. Which is, again, that's basically me. Like, I'm the garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And... His plan is like, you're going to help me find out who my parents are, right? Right. But then it's implied later that he knew all along. Yeah. So, that there, I cannot track. So, it's a cover. It's a cover for him to get the names of Gotham's firstborn children. Okay. That's what he's doing in the Hall of Records later. Sure. It doesn't explain. No. We'll, 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 talk about, we'll talk about Batman's shifting motivations in just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it also doesn't help that it's never explained why specifically he wants to just, I guess because he's angry at his parents. I guess. And he wants to take yeah. out. Yeah. But that's never fully explained. No, but. because it's also implied through Batman looking through older, like, microfiche and stuff, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that the Penguin's just been kidnapping and murdering children yes. for decades. That's <laughs> like, something you'll you'll miss very easily. Yeah, he went with the gang. Yeah. He was like a little circus freak yeah. and went around town murdering a bunch of children. Yeah. It's so weird. So bizarre. So Michelle Fiverr comes back to her apartment. Uh-huh. Every time she comes to her apartment, it's fucking great. They're laying it on thick. It, but it's so good. Oh, no, it's really good. I forgot I'm not married. She's like pouring milk. And- it's so fucking funny. Yeah. It's like, it's it's a one woman show. Oh, like, yeah. She opens the door. Honey, I'm a home. Oh, that's right. I'm not married. It's <laughs> a boyfriend we never see breaks up with her over a voicemail. Voiced by Tim Burton himself. Oh, is that right? Yep. That's yep. funny. Some appendage. Yeah. He's like, I can't be just a dick for you. Like, right, right. <laughs> and man, remember Murphy beds that you sure. could just pull out of a wall? Like, I know they were like, they were played as like the ultimate side of like having no money. Oh, you're down on your luck. Yeah. But that's great. <laughs> no, for, for me as a kid, like I, my concept of Murphy beds, I remember seeing this movie for the first time and being like, oh, that's what Eddie Valiant has. Yeah. In <laughs> Roger Rabbit. Yeah. I thought it was the coolest shit. I'm like, I oh, always thought they were cool too. <laughs> I could have more fucking room to hang out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Selena's never seen a movie before, apparently, sure. because she has to go back to Max's office and she just starts detailing telling his plan out to him his sure. evil plan uh, yeah she says i i pulled all the files on the wayne deal and the power plant it's gonna steal power and he goes <laughs> how industrious yeah he goes she goes i guessed your password it was the name of your chihuahua and right. he's like ah and she's like well I, I, it's a i would say it's a it's a really brilliant plan and he goes who would you say this to yeah <laughs> Dude, this scene is so good because there's no score. It's so fucking predatory. It's so creepy. It's really creepy. And his little fake out when he like makes her laugh. Oh my God. uh, It's so uncomfortable. And like, it's so fucking scary. Walken is terrifying. He's terrifying. In this scene. Yeah. In this scene. And one little part that I want to mention to you, a little detail that is incredible Uh is when she's there like on his computer and he comes over to her on the desk. And it shows a close-up of her, the light, the lamp from the desk that she's on, Uh with her glasses, forms the cat eyes. Oh, wow. I totally missed that. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can find it. But it's it's so subtle. It, I, I can understand why you'd miss it. But like little details like that yeah. really, really sell this performance in this movie. You're, you're like, as we're recording, you're scrubbing through this video uh-huh. of the movie <laughs> and each still looks perfect yeah like it is so pretty it's every frame every frame of painting oh i i love her neon sign hello there hello there yeah it, it's so good i mean it's another reverse engineered bit but yeah. yeah it's i love it i love it this apartment is so good and she's i mean it's another it, it shows how like literally everyone in her life is like trying to control her and fantasize her like that's that's what we get from that apartment scene and then immediately, this fucking piece of shit mm-hmm. <laughs> that she's, like, wasting her life on it kills her. This shot of her falling through each awning is unbelievable. Oof. It's it's so well done. It's so well. Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah. That's great. So good. But, wow. like, she, she it, it, up until this point, before she quote unquote dies everyone is treating her like like garbage she's she even says a line like when he she realizes that he's you know about to do something real terrible to her she says how can you be so mean to someone so meaningless right even bruce doesn't give her a second look nope i mean he's got other shit to do but you know yeah yeah and then after that, everyone's trying to fuck her. Yeah. That's kind of her ca- character art. And devaluing her in a different way. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. 
it's such a good role. Like it I is. understand why this was so. It would. This was such a coveted role. Of like, well, and that's the Heather's of it all too, right? Like yes. that. Th- 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 this is the part where you're like, oh, I can tell that the guy that wrote Heather's came up with this character arc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. This origin story. Yeah. This is where we find out that the power of pussy can bring you back to life because this is <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> but it's so good. It's so scary. Like it's it's a horror movie. It is. This is the other part that I was I was asked to look away in the theater. There's there's a cat chewing on her fingers. Yeah. Yep. Like it's real intense. The and shots of her eyes flickering back in her head yeah. and like the twitches and yeah, it's it's unsettling completely. This movie comes out of left field and says, by the way, there's magic in this movie. And <laughs> sure. fucking we're not explaining shit. Get used to it. And then according to Daniel Waters, he's like, Oh, there wasn't meant to be any implication of magic powers. He's oh. just like, She's just joking when she says she has extra lives. And like, we watch her die multiple times. Yes. Yeah, she gets shot like four or five times. Yeah. You <laughs> yes. So ridiculous. But again, I it's not something like maybe in a modern movie if they tried this, I'd be like, eh. But the fact that they're like, no, this is this is what we're doing. You're mm-hmm. either on board or you're not at this point. Right. I'm I'm fucking in. Yeah. I love that that confidence is what I like about it. And now we're like, we're on her side and we wanna we're gonna watch her chug some milk. I know I I another psycho added to the list right here. Uh-huh. Yeah. And a lot of decisions are made in this scene. Yeah. I, I love it. I fucking sure. love it. I love how it's she's just retreading what she's already done, but it's like clearly something's wrong. That stuff's great. And then when she hears the the Gotham Lady perfume ad about you know the boss will be asking you to stay late and she just melts down it's fantastic this literally if this wasn't a batman movie it was just these two scenes yeah this would be like an incredible short film yes like smash to black right when she like smashes the the answering machine yes like most modern day comic book movies just don't have the the time or the care or the patience to do this much like development for a character right. and i know i'm talking about batman returns here but like but I, I you do say that and i i agree i think that this scene is really great and i love the juxtaposition between this and the earlier apartment scene but then what is the motivating factor to i just died now it's time for me to make my superhero costume yeah i i don't know but <laughs> i mean i love it yeah i also don't buy that she makes a whole skin tight suit out of a jacket but no, i don't I, either but i'll go with it i well, first of all, the score in this scene is incredible. Yeah. Her shoving the stuffed animals down the garbage disposal. <laughs> so wild. Breaking everything. Tons of cats showing up. The, the the neon sign changing to hell here from hello there. Sure. And it's so campy. But I, and I like, I'm watching this scene of, of Selena Kyle having just got pushed out of a window. She's dead. Uh-huh. On the ground, in the snow, alone. Cats are coming out of the woodwork. They're licking her. They're chewing on her. They're biting her. Uh-huh. Her eyes are rolling back in her head. And I'm like, I'm just thinking of this, watching this, I'm like, you know, there was some McDonald's executive being like, yeah, we can make some Happy Meal toys out of this uh-huh. shit. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. I saw this in the theater at four years old. Oh, my and God. And I know my parents regretted it. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I It, it works. So, uh-huh. like, normally, I would not like a scene of unbroken footage of someone putting together their superhero costume or supervillain costume for the first time. But it feels like an extension of this like psychosis yes. we're seeing play out, right? Yeah. Like even in Spider-Man, it's a montage, right? He's sure. drawing and then it's dissolving into do this and this. Uh-huh. No, we stay with her pretty much. She makes her first glove. Like we watch it. Oh, I love the needle as the glove. Like yes. those those little the little sewing hooks. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's got the line, uh, Miss Kitty, I don't know about you, but I feel so much more yummy. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this, this movie. <laughs> this is this is a very specific. This is a good movie. Tim Burton's working out a lot of stuff in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and he's doing that. And I'm also discovering a lot of things. This is, uh, <laughs> sure. this is, this is a, a very important milestone in young Dustin's life. Yeah. As well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then we get the next scene, yeah. which is the mayor's giving a speech about uh, the crime that happened, you know, with last night with the Red Triangle Gang. Don't worry about it. We're taking care of it. And then... This scene is so fucking funny. The the clown backflips onto the stage, uh-huh. steals the baby, uh-huh. says thanks into the microphone. Oh, no, no, no. He says, I've never been one for speeches, so I'll just say thanks. thanks. <laughs> it's a great line. Does a somersault <laughs> into a manhole, and then we hear, like, the it, it, this is the most clearly staged thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. It's the hideous penguin man. Here, uh-huh. take the baby. Uh-huh. I love it. Do you know who that, that uh, acrobat guy is? No. 
Cool. I might blow your mind here. That's Mac's dad from It's Always Sunny. No. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I got. I've also. But here's the thing. I also have heard that it's Doug Jones, but I don't think it's Doug Jones. Doug Jones plays uh, another clown in the movie. He's okay, like okay, he's okay. like the really tall, thin clown in the remote controlled battering yes, scene. That's yeah. right. Yes. That's amazing. But yeah, the fact that anybody falls for this, it's so fucking funny. And then like it's never explained, but Penguin's got an obsession with rubber duckies uh-huh. in this movie. I don't know why. I- I'm assuming the ducky thing comes from Arctic World. It's just a leftover prop but it's sure. weird that that becomes like a, de- a like a defining visual element in this movie Th- there's something with a rubber duck i'll talk all oh, that with the, the whole rubber ducky aesthetic that i'll talk about later that just it's it blows my mind but, okay. but yeah everyone is just like oh penguin it's so normal that you're here to help uh-huh. but we cut to bruce watching the news coverage of the penguins uh arrival mm-hmm. saying he wants to find his parents he wants to figure all this out and alfred says like uh you you know what is it what's going on and he goes his parents i i hope he finds them and yeah. that's true for like four minutes yep. because the next time we see batman he's like the penguin's lying yep. i decided he's a villain like there's there's no connective tissue there literally the next conversation he has he's saying i think he's in charge of the red triangle circus gang he knows who his parents are like mm-hmm. he's just going off intuition yeah. that he didn't have in this first scene it's so weird it is weird i feel like there's a deleted scene there so well, there has to be right because he like drives by the hall of records and right. just looks at him and goes hmm fuck him <laughs> yeah well, there's a couple of scenes like that like there's the bit later on where the penguin when they finally meet face to face the penguin just suddenly leans in and says you don't really think you'll win, do you? And I'm like, win what? You yeah. guys haven't even done anything. <laughs> that That's a trailer line. That's all yes. that is. Yeah. I don't know. I The fact that Bruce Wayne doesn't show up for 30 minutes really into this movie uh-huh. and has his first line, it's kind of jarring. Batman is so bad at his fucking job in this movie. So bad. This <laughs> is not the world's greatest detective. Nope. I mean- he doesn't know Vichy is supposed to be cold. Oh my god. I always thought I didn't know what that was as a kid. I thought it was just like some pudding. Uh-huh. He's like, it's cold. And I'm like, well, yeah, dude, pudding's supposed to be cold. But then I, yeah, I found out it's basically like g- gazpacho or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. It sounds gross. I'm going to be honest with you. Not a fan. <laughs> and then we go to Oswald finds out his parents, quote yeah. unquote, as, but he already knew. Tucker and Esther. Tucker and, and this most redneck ass fucking <laughs> names. Tucker Cobblepot. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. It's so fucking funny. Uh, Tucker Cobblepot, he he owns the, the peanut stand outside of Gotham. Mm-hmm. And then the news reporter calls him the penguin. He goes, I'm not a penguin. I am a man. This elephant man speech he's giving. Yeah. It's so fucking funny. Uh, love it. <laughs> I was their number one son and they treated me like number two. <laughs> Insane light. He also bumps into a foam headstone that mm-hmm. like wobbles at one point. He says he had a Tiffany baby rattle. And That's I'm like, so funny. Jesus Christ. We got to, we have to eat the rich. Like we got to, <laughs> we got to do it. We got to do it. I love this little like Dick Tracy esque scene of people walking around reading the different headlines oh my god this guy's got the funniest fucking line of oh my god yeah he's like a frog that became a prince no he's more like a penguin oh my god a lot. <laughs> it's oh, the best i had never noticed that line before this watch i lo- i had to pause the movie <laughs> it's so fucking funny uh, no nah, he's more like a penguin <laughs> <laughs> so good uh, and then okay so this woman's getting mugged in the back alley uh-huh. and we get introduced to Catwoman for the first time Oof. and I, I just wrote a lot all cats this movie's doing a lot for me now too yeah <laughs> Catwoman has some problematic dialogue here though uh huh so she, she this is what we we get blood we get sure yeah no she slashes this dude's face uh-huh. and in a tic-tac-toe pattern as she says uh-huh and then i i love the character though of the woman being like thanks i thought he was gonna hurt me and she just grabs her by the throat yeah and says, you make it so easy is yeah. what she says Ugh. you can't you can't be sitting around waiting for a batman to rescue uh-huh and then she backflips out of the seat into the pitch blackness it's so funny <laughs> it's so <laughs> extra it's the the amount of fucking acrobats and stunts that she has to do in this movie uh-huh. is so fucking funny. Yeah. It's so extra. It's I keep wanting to know, like, wh- what was the costume situation like for, for whoever is doing, like, the backflips and stuff? Mm-hmm. Or are we? I know there's some, there's a couple of, like, little CG shots in here, mm-hmm. but, like, she had to be vacuum sealed into that costume. Mm-hmm. So whoever's doing these backflips has to have some kind of give in their version of the suit. Yeah. It's, it's so wild. I, this is hands down the best 
Catwoman suit, period. Oh, like, I, it's, I disagree. <laughs> really? I think this is, it's so iconic. It's so, like, grungy. It is, but man, it. I have problems with the stitches that clearly don't connect to anything. Oh, and fair enough. I meant, like, the design as a whole. Like It looks cool, but it's, I mean, I- But it also feels- realistic to this situation like it sure. feels somebody who doesn't have access to anything just making a superhero suit if we're talking live action suits sure oh that's what i mean yes oh, okay yeah because I, I there's a billion others in the comics that i like way more oh, but sure 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 <laughs> I, I also like anne hathaway's uh costume a lot too yeah it's all right i I just shut that down real quick. That's no, fine. it's fine. I I just I really hate that movie. <laughs> I, I I I love I love it. I know, and that's okay. I'm sorry, I know, I know it's stupid. It's stupid as fuck, but I love that movie. Sure, mostly just because I love Bane. And no, I, I love, love Bane. Sure, and Anne Hathaway is uh, incredible in that movie. Sure, that movie also does some things. For we should have had uh, yeah, we should have had Bane in this movie. Oh my god! Well. If uh, two movies from now, Bane, any indication of where we took Bane as a villain uh, is any indication, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> sure. I'm glad we waited and got the, a good version. Sure. So. Then we got, we t- speaking of suits, uh-huh. Max's suit when he's meeting with Bruce. My God, it's a good look, right? It's so good. It's a red plaid bow tie and then a black and gray thick striped suit. It's, it's, it is a, it's like he turned a prison suit on its side. I was just about to say it's like foreshadowing of like a prison attire. Yes. It's so good. It's it so looks- good. It looks great, yeah. He looks incredible, and I mean, the hair is ridiculous, but... You nailed it when you mentioned Caligari earlier, yeah. because the whole movie, Shrek is is costumed and tailored like he's in a German expressionistic film. Uh-huh. It's crazy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Selena Kyle comes back from the dead... She like Max introduces this like this fake story of like oh you got that cut on your head from a skiing trip or whatever you know it's a blur it's I, so good. I love this whole little monologue I think she's great the bit where she goes and the boy who noticed like she she talks about like forgetting to wear her underwear to school or something like that mm-hmm. she mentions the boy who noticed it and she goes he's dead now uh-huh. like I love that shit that's so good she's and, a girl boss now and everyone is flummoxed by it Bruce can't handle it uh-huh. Bruce cannot talk to women at all like uh-huh. he's literally just like I don't he doesn't even know where his coat is mm-hmm. he can't finish sentences and I gotta say I, I fucked up the quote last week uh, when I, bit, uh, when I gave the clue when I gave the clue well it's because he says it in a way that no human beings ever said this phrase before uh-huh Walken says I've got better fish to fry uh-huh uh-huh it's not bigger <laughs> No, nope. that's not what that phrase is. Nope. Can I tell you though? Before he says that, a line that got me so fucking good. Yeah, was after Selena and and Bruce leave. Chip says something. You buying that? Yeah, yeah. And deadpan, without even looking at Chip, he goes, "Nothing surprises me, Chip." Oh yeah, it's really good, doesn't he? He's, he he oh, sort of insinuates to his son that he murdered his mom. Uh huh. Right? Like he's like he's. And, but, oh, there's that, and then just like. Max's expression is just more like annoyed. He's yes. like, oh, nothing and nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> no, he, he literally I, I like, lost it. And like, this is the most evil man in the world to the point where like a murder victim surviving is like the least of his worries right now. Uh huh. He's like, I'll deal with it. It's, it's so <laughs> annoying. I'll drop her out a higher window is the funniest, one of the funniest lines in this movie. It's, it's yeah. so good. Speaking of uh, bigger fish, uh-huh. we cut to the mayoral office uh, where- We get a split <laughs> diopter shot we when do. Shrek comes up the stairs, we which do. looks gorgeous. It's incredible. So he lowers Oswald down <laughs> with a raw fish. <laughs> <laughs> Did they set up this office in Arctic World? Well, like, I, I, where are we? I don't know. I mean, this has got to be in town, right? It's got to be in. That's what I thought, too. Near but Gotham like, Square. I, yeah, I cannot figure it out. No, the, the, don't even try. The geography makes no sense. Our research tells us that voters like fingers. Oh, my God. I lost it at that <laughs> line, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking this whole scene is so fucking funny like yes he lords the, uh, this giant baby man in this onesie uh-huh. that is just covered in shit you know it is everyone applauds i know he's eating a raw fish he's got the gut spewing out of his mouth along with the black bile and then yeah the the uh, researchers <laughs> 
<laughs> shows the voters like fingers. It's really funny. Not a lot of reflective surfaces in the sewer, huh? And funny line, but then this guy getting bit on the nose. Yeah. It's so much blood. That guy was also <laughs> in an episode of Always Sunny mm-hmm. when uh when Charlie and Mac get their their house, like yep. they move into the house together. Yep. That's the that's the guy, like their neighbor. Oh, that's so fucking funny. I remember that. Or no, it's not. Ch- yeah, it's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This scene scared me as a fucking kid too, because there's so much blood and just his little black sharpened teeth biting into your nose. Oh, uh-huh. oh, so gross. And then meanwhile, this is where the penguin becomes horny and doesn't stop being horny for the rest of the movie. <laughs> he suddenly remembers, oh, women exist. That's the <laughs> like, biggest parasol I've ever seen. Uh huh. And he's like. I'd like to fill her void. Yeah. Oh. And as Max tells him, like, you can have anything you want, like the the, the ear of the press, unlimited poontang. Unlimited poontang is a line in a Batman movie. In a Batman movie delivered by Christopher Walken. Where they have sold Happy Bill toys. To in, one of, in one of DeVito's greatest line deliveries, he goes, you drive a hard bargain, Max. All right, I'll be mayor. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So we got we got to establish. So the plan is Max can't run for mayor right. because it just it just wouldn't work. It's a conflict of interest. Nobody would vote for a businessman no. to be mayor of anything. I I distinctly remember when Donald Trump announced his his candidacy and going to work the next day and saying like, "Isn't that the fucking craziest thing you've ever heard?" And one of my coworkers saying. I don't know. I think this company could use a businessman in charge. Ugh. And I was like, what are you fucking talking about? The businesses that have all failed. <laughs> right. And I, I just remember thinking like, oh, no, yeah. like people actually do like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same. Like when Oswald starts walking up the stairs and turns around and just screams, burn, baby, burn. Yeah. First of all, great line. Yeah. Second of all. Trump is a hundred percent said that at some point. Uh-huh. Like it's, it's not without question, he has done that. Probably at one of those rallies where he's dancing to YMCA without knowing what the song is about. Uh huh. Doesn't move any part of the bottom half of his body. Yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the laziest fucking dance I've ever seen. But uh-huh. so Max wants also to become mayor because it'd be like a you know what what's it called um like a puppet uh mayor mayor so yeah. he can actually get his bills passed and everything. Yeah, because I mean that was like the whole argument that he and Bruce were having was he was like well i've bruce is like i've talked to the mayor like i he's not going to approve your your power plant you know proposition mm-hmm. and then he goes mayor's change yep. like <laughs> yeah yeah the the scene with him with them two going toe to toe is really good uh-huh yeah because neither of them are giving it's it's pretty great so then we get this montage of the city just being destroyed. A dog runs into a toy store with a grenade in its mouth uh-huh. and blows it up. It's it's very funny. Where are these vagrant clowns getting bazookas from? I, yeah, they got nunchucks. They got swords. They got bazookas, Tommy guns. Oh, my God. Batman pulling the sword out of the sword swallower's throat and then punching him is really good. Really good. Really good. And I love that this Batman, I mean, uh, some of it is just a consequence of, uh, you know, the suit, like not really being able to move in it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like Ashley pointed out, like, I don't see this Batman training in the fucking Himalayas for like six years. Like this is a Batman who just learned how to fight on the schoolyard. (laughs) Yeah. This is, this is a, yeah, a guy that he's a scrapper. Yeah. He doesn't do cardio. He's just, he's lifting weights. That's all he's doing. (laughs) Sure. No, that's what I, that's what I liked about Robert Pattinson's Batman is he's like, well, I've got a suit that literally bullets can't get through. So I'm just going to walk until I'm close enough for a punch. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Love it. You know, I wrote this down too. You know why this movie, I like this movie so much more than a lot of other Batman movies? What's that? Fucking goons. Yeah. This movie has we got goons some in colorful it. Colorful goons. Exactly. They're circus goons. They're not guys in paramilitary gear. No, like, we've got a poodle lady. We've got a fire breather. Mm-hmm. We've got a, yeah, tall, tall clown with nunchucks. It is. It's straight out of a comic book, uh-huh. but in a good way. Like I love these it. are fucking goons. These yeah. are loyal goons. They they're committed to the aesthetic, and it worked so well with this movie. I love it. I'm so tired of faceless army at the end of these guys in balaclavas <laughs> with <laughs> sure. you know AK-47s and shit or whatever. Sure. It's boring. Give me goons. I want goons. But how do you feel about more casual bat murder? I him putting the the bomb, the bomb on the, the dynamite and smiling. Love it. Oh, I hate. I love I hate it. it. So so much really yes well, that's oh, oh, okay but this this batman is not that batman like he, he doesn't have that moral code or if he does it's never established it's just no, like it's not and i take it as it, the same thing as batman begins your one of your favorites is he definitely is responsible for killing Ra's al Ghul, oh, however yeah. no, he tries to twist it that's one of the things about that movie i don't like yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i don't 
mine did. I mean, it's not it's not on the level of Ben Affleck just running over a bunch of people and yes. blowing up a warehouse full of human beings yes. and throwing a dude's head into a wall. <laughs> I, I like it because it's like, well, it is kind of brains over brawn because yeah. he even says hit me and he hits the guy and oh, that didn't work. Well, how can I take this guy out? Right. Well, I'll use one of these goons' own dynamite. It's not like he brought his his dynamite. Then it would be a little too far. You know, he's <laughs> he's resourceful. Sure. This Batman's resourceful. Okay. But I get it. I totally get why you don't like it. Yeah. That being said, he burns the devil earlier. Oh, he yeah. blows this guy up. I'm, I'm fucking in on it. <laughs> no, I mean, he made the decision to throw the Joker off a cathedral in the first one. Like, yeah. it, there is precedent here. Yeah. But- it's it's so casual. And I think a lot of that is because, you know, we're coming right out of the 80s where we're so used to villains having this, like, I mean, it's the Hans Gruber effect, right? Like, mm-hmm. we want to see that crazy comeuppance at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think the, like, the vocabulary existed in Hollywood filmmaking to allow the main villain to survive in a big tentpole action movie. Yep. So, I, I get, I get it, but it just bums me out. Yeah. I know. It's... Once you set the devil on fire at the beginning of the movie, I'm kind of I'm kind of down with whatever. I've always said that. Yeah, that's that's my go to. Uh-huh. So I I don't mind it, but I understand I understand your criticism. Yeah, Catwoman going into this department store uh-huh. with her Indiana Jones whip. Yep. and knocking off those four mannequin heads. Incredible. Um, th- apparently Michelle Pfeiffer did that in one take. Yeah, uh, for real. Yes, uh-huh. it was incredible. These two security guards uh, delivering the worst line of dialogue in the entire film. Oh, disagree. <laughs> this is this has to be you and me. Like this is our bit part. Are these two guys? Oh no, abs- I wrote that <laughs> down. This is the- <laughs> yeah. I did write that down. I, I don't know whether to open fire, fire or fall, fall in love. love. Yeah, fucking same, dude. And then the other guy is just like, our take home is less than 300. Oh, like, don't kill us. Fucking oof. I do love that. <laughs> that made me laugh really hard. No, it's it's a really funny line, but I'm just like, come on, guys. It's out of a co- it's out of the comic book. This feels like some shitty, like, yeah, this almost feels Adam West era. Yes. Like, oh, like, fully. I fucking dig it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this this movie has so much more DNA in common with the Batman 66 than the first one does. Yep. And if I was this guy, too, I would be like, I kind of be like, you know what? You could whip me once. Let me just, <laughs> <laughs> let me just, it, would, it would do a lot for me, lady. Just <laughs> Oh, boy. And our, our villain and hero meet each other for the first time as well. And they act like they know each other. Yeah. Both villains yeah. Uh, introduce. Because... I love how they're just having a casual conversation, and then, uh, well, first of all, she she gets a bunch of spray, uh, like, aerosol cans, puts them in a microwave, uh-huh. rips a wall, a, a metal sheet off a wall, and there's just a giant, like, red tank, which- That says gas, right? I was gonna say, thank God it said the word gas in big, bold letters, otherwise I'd have no idea what was going on right here. Right, of course. <laughs> but what an introduction of Catwoman to these two characters, because she- they're just having a conversation. She front flips into the fucking sea. <laughs> she literally out of frame. And like lands with her hands up. Like she's like voguing slash. She lands in like a Susie Sue pose mm-hmm. with her hands over her face and then says meow. meow. And then the building explodes. Boom. It's incredible. It's so extra. I love it so much. She's a girl boss. She's a fucking <laughs> girl boss. And I fucking like. Lo- she might as well be doing the blue steel after she gets done flipping. Uh-huh. Like, it's it's really good. It's so good. It's really good. This fight's great too. I mean the the I saw her first and I love the helicopter umbrella. So funny. It's such a good gag. And then this fight between Catwoman and Batman is really good, especially yeah. the how could you? I'm a woman. Batman is such a moron. He like, is. He's so for the shit. I mean, this Batman, the first thing we see him do in the Burton movies is just like that first scene, we all remember, you know, I'm Batman, him flying down, grabbing the guy. Mm-hmm. But before that, the first thing that happens is he steps towards them and gets shot like five times and falls down. Mm-hmm. Like he does. He's so bad at being Batman. I love it. I do too. I, I, I mean, just would love like, I, I understand bad, just, Batman's got to have gadgets. Uh-huh. I would just love a modern day Batman movie where it is. We do have a scene like that. Like. It doesn't have to be a time period piece, sure. but like, get rid of all the like. I like Robert Pattinson's little contact lens video camera stuff. Sure. Fine, but I would love it just like a Batman that's just his his sight uh-huh. just terrifies people. Yeah, like that's and that's well, they were kind of doing that with Batfleck, and they got they got there with Pattinson, I think, in the beginning. And yeah, he kind of you know, I, I I what I love about the Pattinson movie is that his character arc is I got to figure out a way to throw this thing mm-hmm. <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of instead of it just being I can't just have my battering be a stabber mm-hmm. 
Oh, the battering in this movie we'll talk about later. Oh, but yeah. Jesus. Catwoman's got a lot of one-liners right here. Life's uh-huh. a bitch, now so am I. Yes. Great, great line. It, it, it does feel like she's trying out different catchphrases. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole movie. How do you feel about the kitty litter? Saved by <laughs> kitty litter. I think it's a silly line that she delivers perfectly. I think it's so goofy, but it's so par for the course yes. that she just happens to fall into an... You know those open trucks of kitty litter that yeah. you see all the time? Totally. I also... <laughs> I love that Batman's utility belt includes a vial of acid. Just acid. Just random acid. Because, you know, that worked out real well the last time you threw someone in acid. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I, yeah, I do also, I love this sequence where she, like, looks for the opening in the armor and then stabs there. Great. Like, I, I just, uh, all of that's good. It's really good. I also love this shot of him getting back to the Batcave and looking beat to shit and just like sort of partially suited. Uh We don't ever really get to see that. And how is it not a meme template of the shot of him just holding (laughs) a telephone up to his ear? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I agree. I think Nolan maybe even made a callback about the her finding the weakness in his armor and stabbing him. Uh huh. I think so. In uh, one of those movies, I think it's Dark Knight, where he says, you know, he's talking with Fox and he's like, "How's this armor?" And he's like, "You're going up against dogs, and w- well, it should do fine against cats." Uh huh. Like, I think that was kind of a, like a little. It may maybe maybe I'm overthinking it, but I felt like that was kind of a little throwaway line about that. Okay. So <laughs> Oswald goes up to his office and Catwoman's in his bed, uh-huh. and oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> She says, just the pussy I've been looking for yep. in this PG-13 Batman movie. Insane line. <laughs> and he is gross. This scene is wild. He is coming on so fucking hard. It's yep. like it's like a real life Tinder message came to life. Like uh-huh. this guy is just going for it. Like, th- but but then you've got Catwoman being overly sexualized. Like she's humping the bed, basically. She's like, she does the thing where she's licking her hand and rubbing it against herself like a cat cleaning itself. Yeah. It's, this scene is wild. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like, that's the thing that keeps happening in this movie where a lot of characters suddenly have a whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, she she's now, I have to actually do cat things, like mm-hmm. bathe myself. Mm-hmm. And I try, she tries to eat a bird, which apparently Michelle Pfeiffer actually put a bird in her mouth for this movie. Put a real bird. Put a real bird in her mouth. Yeah. And uh, where the fuck do they get the blueprints for the batmobile uh, who could know I, not only that they're apparently just like physics engineers and everything Tech geniuses yeah. from the circus yeah these cars they're gonna make an atomic bomb yeah <laughs> an h bomb on wheels and i love that she's like i'm gonna take this bird and he uh-huh. puts a he puts a knife up to a cat's throat so wild <laughs> It's so insane. Yeah. It's so nuts. And also, they just, they have both decided that they're both, like, she's decided she's a super villain now and mm-hmm. that she hates Batman. Yeah. Because they got one little fight. It's also explained to us later that she maybe died when she was thrown into the kitty litter mm-hmm. because she keeps saying, Batman killed me. And I was like, I thought you said you were saved. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what are you talking about? And this, we should mention, this is kind of the template for the multiple villains teaming up in a superhero movie. Oh, yeah. This is where it starts, yeah. right? Yep. They have to have two villains. Uh, in the next one three villains in Batman and Robin Jesus and, Christ and then the Spider-Man movies and the X-Men movies don't learn from this either yeah No Way Home is all the villains basically. sure so th- we gotta talk about the Ice Princess who we haven't talked about so yet I push the button dude Sh- yeah, the, the tree lights up I dude. push the button no <laughs> she, no no she, it's basically pull the grenade throw the pin like that's exactly <laughs> what she's doing yeah. it's so st- I love how ditzy this character is supposed it's so funny but it is clearly like this is what this character like this is what tim burton thinks of these kinds of people like uh-huh. they're just completely stupid it is i mean again it is a it's a it's a character from heathers right yes. like it's fully a character from heathers yeah i love this actress too i think she's so funny she's so she's having a blast yeah pink one beats her in the face with a batarang uh-huh which i actually like kind of like because earlier when we t- I talked about the batarang <laughs> batman's fighting some goons he programs it to hit them all and knock them out uh-huh. but the but the woman we see constantly with the little dog grabs it midair and they just kind of walk off and you don't think anything of it. Right. But this is where it comes back. Right. So I thought that was really, really smart. No, it is good. It is weird that everyone just takes some very circumstantial evidence and mm-hmm. is like actually immediately fuck Batman. He's uh-huh. the worst. Uh huh. I love it. We cut, we good. A date between, uh, uh, I don't think we mentioned it yet, but maybe uh, when they're walking down the street and they're t- like Catwoman, or not Catwoman, uh, uh, Selena and Bruce, and she's like, uh, have you heard about this uh, 
this penguin guy and then they're talking about the fight from last night uh-huh. and then bruce looks over his shoulder and he's like he does a double take and there's just a newspaper that's blown up it says batman blows it yeah and there's <laughs> another one that says me ouch uh-huh it's so good uh-huh it's very funny but they they have a date at bruce banner he has one of my favorite lines in the movie also where she's like talking about how like upsetting everything is and he goes you've uh y- y- you got kind of a dark side don't you <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah i like this date scene a lot yeah the, the kissing but you're actually touching the wounds on my body that you caused is yeah. really good they call each other out for essentially being like loner stereotypes mm-hmm. and like she he's like the the brooding playboy and then she's the angry secretary and Mm -hmm. it's a good scene it's it's i i don't know that i like it as much as the the date scene from yeah oh no the vicky vale one yeah the vicky vale one's good it's so good it's so endearing and then i but I fucking love Michael Goff as Alfred in this scene. Mm-hmm. He's so funny. This this scene is so like Alfred doesn't get much to do in this movie either. Right. But I do like how funny this scene ends is because Bruce has to leave because he's got to go you know get the penguin and he's like both of them are trying to get him to like cover uh-huh, for them. It's uh-huh. so good. She says, "Can you make up a dirty limerick for me?" And Alfred's all pervy ass. One has just come to mind. <laughs> what 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 do you think it was? I have no. It's got to be there the once was, was a bat from the from right? <laughs> uh when he saw a cat woman he came buckets yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah that's the one that's yeah it. alfred yeah. definitely thought that yep i think it's well known that alfred is a big old perv oh, like of course you know when when he, whenever bruce has women over he's like lurking in the shadows <laughs> he's behind paintings looking through the aisles oh yeah yeah little pervert good stuff the most unbelievable part about this movie for me uh-huh. is that the batmobile wouldn't have some sort of security protocol in place well they have he's like put his shields up we get that cgi shield bit mm-hmm. that like we got from the first movie mm-hmm. but these folks can just override it. Yeah, with just a remote. Yeah, like they got like a universal remote from, from <laughs> Radio right. Shack. Yep. Yeah, it's so weird. But yeah, they start taking apart the Batmobile and putting this little device on it. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, uh, the Ice Princess has been kidnapped. Yes, and Batman's framed for it because the battering was found at the scene of the crime, covered in blood. I like how creepy this is that he goes into this empty warehouse and she's just there tied up yeah it's a really good setting we do have that really funny shot where he's across the street Mm -hmm. and like looking through the windows and we have to see the moment that he notices the princess and his head just kind of rears back (laughs) it's really it's it's some good physical acting from keaton this this fight though yeah between him and catwoman like it's one this part where i'm like this it's one too many jokes guys eat floor high in fiber is one of the worst lines in any batman movie so stupid i haven't eaten all day we'll eat floor yeah really stupid then somehow we get up to the roof i guess catwoman does some more backflips uh-huh. for no reason she's kidnaps the ice princess i do like when she's fighting batman though she takes the chair out from the ice princess underneath her and she like oh, yeah. falls to the floor she and does she's a little like bit lion of a lion taming. bit yeah it's good <laughs> it's really funny so sh- the ice princess falls off the roof turns on the lights when she lands dude we watch a woman this movie might as well be called Batman Returns: Colon Women Falling from High Places. Sure, it's constantly happening. Yeah, it's and it's a it both times a hell of a rear projection shot. Uh huh. And, and this is a very dark scene because she gets pushed off. There's bats everywhere. Uh-huh. She lands on the button to light up the tree, right. and then what? Of course, bats have to fly out. Like thousands of bats fly out. It's somehow funny and dark as shit. Oh like, sure, it's a very black humor, dark joke kind and, of thing. Uh, we also get this thing that I, I, it drives me crazy in this movie. And it also is the same thing as in Batman 89. So Batman 89, we have the, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight, right? Mm-hmm. Which is not a thing anyone's ever said, but it allows Batman to figure out who the Joker is. Oh, you're talking about the mistletoe? The mistletoe rhyme, yeah. which is fully made up for this movie, but they act like it's a thing that everyone's ever said. Yep. Yep. <laughs> mistletoe can be deadly if you eat a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. Yep. Yep. And oh, I guess we didn't mention, yeah. Catwoman just licking his face. <laughs> and then Michael Keaton just licking his lips right afterwards. Yep. It's it's, it's a lie. This this movie is so fucking horny, dude. It's insane. <laughs> and you will never you don't get any kind of sexual tension in any comic book movie anymore. No, There's none. Not like this, no. Everyone's sexless. And everyone is sexless. So And Batman doesn't really uh help his case very much where if everybody's afraid of him and the next thing he does is spread his wings Mm -hmm. and glide over everyone in the town square Uh he might as well be screaming like ah (laughs) 
<laughs> but also, before he j- he goes off the roof, these police officers come up and immediately start shooting. Start, yeah. Like they they don't give. They, there's no freeze. There's no hands up. They come out the top, like the stairs to the roof, and they just start blasting on. <laughs> Gordon, Gordon's like, hold your fire, and they like shoot him like eight sh- shoot him like eight times. Mm-hmm. Catwoman gets dropped from a another. We get another shot of Catwoman falling from a great height. Yep. Yep. I love this. The greenhouse scream. I love it. It's real good. Yeah. And it's like one thing about Catwoman that I like in this movie is her suit throughout the whole movie just gets more and more ruined yes. because of course yeah. it was. She only has the one. Right. So when she she's okay, so she's arguing with Oswald and they're like, hey, we did it. And he's like, you're gonna let me fuck you now, right? And she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Consummate our unholy union. Yeah. Is he maybe the takes the lead for the most incel character we've covered on the show? Probably. I think so. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But he gives her this umbrella that takes off the helicopter one. I love it. It's so goofy. Go to heaven. Go to heaven is what he tells her. I love this wide shot, too, of oh, her like kind of kicking while she's she's being carried away. It's great. I, I also, I really like where she says we were supposed to scare the ice princess, not kill her. And he goes, she looked pretty scared to me. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. But yeah, the gre- like, I love that she's like, she, she falls in the greenhouse. She sits up her hair is coming out of the mask and everything yeah and then just the scream and the glass breaking shatters the rest of it yeah it's incredible it's a great shot so good it's one of the most memorable moments of the movie for me yeah so good so yeah and then also batman when he gets in his car you know it's take it's being taken over by the goons yeah another prescient thing uh just a car running over people in a crowd sure yeah, I don't know about you, but it's I've been seeing tons of videos. It's on the rise lately. Those, these self-driving cars that aren't doing so hot. Not even that. Like just people at protests around oh, the world just driving their cars through people. It's nuts. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's nuts. Yeah, it, it's this is a. I think this is a really effective scene, except for. I mean, it's another problem I have with the 89 where I'm just like, you have the one set, you have like the one city block. So this car is going so fucking slow, but he's acting like he's pulling G's. Yep. The police car like moves like it's in a Walt Disney stunt show where it Mm -hmm. just sort of slowly raises up on a lift and falls back down. Yep. Batman almost hits a homeless woman yep. pushing a cart full of cans like she's like she's Sandy Bullock at speed. And he decides, <laughs> you know what I need to do? I need to pop in a CD. Uh-huh. Gotta get some tunes. Yeah. Oh, we should do like an edit of that. He pops it in and it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> so it's a good song. Mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the penguin is having a fucking blast in his little Kmart ride. Toy Batmobile. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. And when Batman gets to control of the device yeah. and the penguin realizes that the scream he gives uh-huh. is so f- it's genuinely terrifying uh-huh. when he's angry screamed and Batman has to like punch the screen to like shut it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's really good. God, Danny DeVito is so good in this movie. Danny DeVito is great. And I, I think this is one of Keaton's best moments in this movie is when he tries to uh, initiate essentially the bat. The, what is it called? The bat bullet is what it's called. in the, uh, in the little, uh, little stock car. Yeah. yeah. Which again, Nolan would yep. steal this for the bat pod. Yep, but, uh, sure would. He, he presses the button and it doesn't work at first. And he just goes that's funny yeah <laughs> yep yep it's a great lie it's a great little bit but yeah it becomes like a little uh pinewood derby car yeah and it goes to the wall again a situation you would only ever use this one time right but whatever and it also you know severely calls into question the structural integrity of the batmobile as a whole oh my god yeah <laughs> well this one is like a piece a hunk of plastic right like, it's not the tank from the Dark Knight and stuff like that. I had this as a as a uh, model kit when I was a kid. Oh, I I had a little toy toy one. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was real good. <laughs> Oswald decides he's going to have a rally, sure. even though it's not election season. Sure, sounds like somebody. Uh huh. And he's like, "Oh, the mayor's got to go. Look at all this crime that's been happening. But he can't control that. The, he can't control the Batman." We cut to Alfred saying to Bruce, essentially, well, "The first thing we need to do is destroy this ugly little fucker." Uh huh. Uh huh. So, it, during that tirade where the penguin was taking control of Batman's car, he uh-huh. was saying all this horrible shit. I played this town like a harp from hell. Great line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These pinheads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, while Oswald's giving the speech, Bruce overrides the speaker system and uh-huh. starts playing all this stuff out. He scratches the, rec- the, worst the part CD of the movie. like a record. The wiki wiki The worst wiki? part of the movie. Yeah. Why, why do that? No idea. Why do that at all? It's, and it's then- also a fully, it's a different line read. Yep. The version that plays over 
is like way like more calm uh-huh. and the uh we also get an idea for how extra batman is because the way he goes to the bat cave is he sticks his hand in a fish tank mm-hmm, pulls mm-hmm. a switch and then steps into an iron maiden yep and alfred is like i'm gonna take the stairs which insinuates it's easy to get there yeah and they pretty much get there at the same time it's, it's so, so funny, funny. But the thing about the the record scratch, yes. first of all, stupidest part of the movie. But this also kicks off the Schumacher. That's also not how CDs work. Yes, and it also puts it starts the Schumacher ification of Batman because it's got a little bat symbol on it. Oh sure, yeah. It's like everything's got to be branded, it's branded. Yeah, it's so stupid. But yeah, so people start booing Oswald. Everyone on the stage leaves. I love the little shrug that Max gives. Like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there always someone who brings eggs and tomatoes to a speech? He's got a point. Why do? Why is there lettuce? Why does everyone bring lettuce and tomatoes? So funny. <laughs> and then, yeah, the penguin just opens up fire on this fucking crowd. It's so fucking funny. Yeah. I just, I it's just like, well, fuck it. I, just, I guess I'm going to be evil again. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, they start chasing after the penguin. He he runs back to the Arctic Zoo. The Gotham PD have no fucking trigger. Like, they're so trigger happy in this movie. Oh, yeah. They're shooting at him. Yes. They just start blasting. And he jumps off of Graffiti Bridge. Mm-hmm. And basically, allow me to introduce my plan 30 minutes before the end of the movie. Yep. Yep. And he, he, go, he goes right back into the opposite of the elephant man. I am not a man. I am an animal. Right. And he's like, this is what we're doing. We're kidnap. Go around town. Kidnap all of uh, Gotham City's. The first Firstborn. Firstborn sons. We're going to drown them in toxic waste. Yes. This goon. Killing kids. Is, God damn, it's the funniest fucking part of the movie to me. When it when it cuts to him, just sort of staring. Yeah. Isn't that a little. Well, the pig was like frothing at the mouth. He's like, get all the get fr- firstborn children. And it holds on him. And off screen, you just hear, uh, Pigwood? Yeah. <laughs> He was like, uh, killing sleeping children's a little, and he trails off. The penguin shoots him in the heart. Yeah. He goes, no, it's, it's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> and he kicks him into the water. It's so good. Oh, uh, it's the funniest fucking part of the movie. <laughs> it's one of the best. It's, it is on par with Jack Nicholson in the first movie saying, Bob, gun. Uh-huh. And then just shooting Bob in the face. Uh-huh. Like- <laughs> it's so fucking funny, dude. And then we go to the Max Grade. Sure. Max Shrek's Max Grade. The fucking mask uh-huh. <laughs> that he has on. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's- Yawn. Yeah. Oh, uh, Bruce Wayne. Who, who are you supposed to be? Yeah, it's so fucking funny. Great suit. Yeah. And this banger of a Susie and the Banshees song, uh-huh. face to face playing. Like, uh, uh-huh. the song that got me into the band. Like, yes. I love Susie and the Banshees. Well, here's the thing, too. This movie, like, y- the pacing is so good because it keeps moving. Like, sure. Even when it doesn't make sense, yes. they're going to keep going. Yeah. And you don't even realize that you still got like 30 minutes of the movie left here. Like, right. This feels like we should be wrapping up, but this ball scene is great. Yeah. And it's also, they fucking ripped it off for Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Catwoman and Bruce having a meeting at a masquerade party. With no masks. With no mask on, yeah. I love that. I love that detail. That is great. Selena comes down, looks incredible. Uh-huh. Looks so fucking good. Yeah. And then- He's because he's talking about her, him accidentally standing her up at the at the uh, the manor earlier. Yeah, and he says no hard feelings, Han. She says actually semi hard, and I'm like, God, this movie is so hard. It's wild. <laughs> and then uh, she casually reveals that she's there to shoot Max. Oh my God, it's incredible reveal. Like yeah. it's. When he's like, oh, you and Max don't have a thing? And she starts laughing maniacally. <laughs> no, this and Max. Yes. Yeah. I I love, I will say, I, you know, and, and I, and I, this pains me to say it because I love Michael Keaton so much, but the scene doesn't totally gel for me sometimes because I think she's so committed to this performance mm-hmm. and he's sort of, I don't know, I feel like Bruce gets really lost in this movie. Yeah. Well, he also, he doesn't have to finish the mistletoe rhyme here to then tell her he knows who she is and she knows who he is but he does right like it's kind of weird it's a well this is when they both figure it out yes and it's yeah and it i do love her does this mean we have to start fighting moment oh that's so fun it's It's so she's like scared she's genuinely scared of it i love that too yeah yeah when she shows the gun and he sees it and she has to like pull him in and hold him restrained and he's like don't give me that killing max won't save anybody shit because it definitely it will. will and i'm like yeah i just it's she's so good in this movie dude it's yeah. she, i know 
Danny DeVito gets all the praise. She equally deserves just as much. She's so good. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, uh, the penguin shows up and he's like, you didn't invite me, so I crashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best. He reveals this. He, he tells him, I'm, I'm here to, while you're in here wearing suits and dancing badly, <laughs> I'm still in your kids. Yeah, you dress up like jerks, yep. get juiced and dance badly. <laughs> I, I put it together in this scene that Max's son named Chip. That means his name is Chip Shrek. Uh huh. And I'm like, that sounds an awful lot like shipwrecked, buddy. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks, Chip Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Go, uh, Dad, save yourself. Funniest line. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, we also discover that like the the penguin's gonna put all these kids in. Like, well, I guess this goes hand in hand with there being forty people in Gotham, but uh-huh. like. This is the tiniest fucking train. The two little, ch- I love that it's a little choo-choo train, uh-huh. and Vincent Chevelli's driving it. We, we haven't talked about Oh, yeah, about. we didn't even talk. The goat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Love him. I love it. It's so funny that it's a little choo-choo train going through the streets. I, I think about, again, you're McDonald's, you're like, we could sell some Happy Meal toys. We sold it for the first movie. Yeah. This movie, you're, you're kidnapping children and putting them in cages. Putting kids in cages <laughs> and planning to drown them. Uh-huh. That's the plan. And this is where we get to reveal that the little penguins and penguins lair have these tiny little metal hats yeah. on and little rockets strapped to their back. I know you probably don't like it. Oh, I think it's fucking great. <laughs> I think it's great. It doesn't make a lick of sense. Uh-huh. Where where do they get the software? Yeah. Where do they build any of this shit? I'm like, Penguin, f- screw the whole Batman and the firstborn kids thing. You figured out how to control animals. Yeah. You learned how to talk to them. You give a speech to them and they understand you. Yes. This is a better plot than Maxwell Lord had in Wonder Woman 1984. Yes. Like, it is. It yes. Is, Still. <laughs> you did it. You you can control animals, buddy. You 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 were gonna make a fortune. Yeah, you're you're good. It's so fun. It's so funny. It's so good. It's so funny. And it like no, I love it. It just does. It doesn't make a lick of sense, but I love it so much. But I, that's I like it because this feels like some goofy comic book shit. Sure, like, it's it's so ridiculous the penguin would have done this minus like murdering babies but mm-hmm. like he would have he would have control found a way to control penguins in the adam west series also straight out of the adam west series batman's stationary mm, i love that he has like a letter that just has like a batman letterhead on it it's so good yeah he rescues the kids and sends penguin a letter and saying sorry they can't make it and that's where he gives his patent speech to the penguins. <laughs> Hell, the sexes are equal with their erogenous zones blown sky high. Yep, yep. And an insane line of dialogue. His his plan is, I'm going to send all these penguins to the city and blow up the city, I guess. And then he does a little heel click. He does. Like, he does a little hop and a heel click. He it's does. so funny. And I love that he had the, the one female goon that he had. He's making her be the announcer. Uh-huh. It's like the Austin Powers gag of like just the announcer talking all <laughs> time her delivery though is wild it's so funny like estimated casualties uh-huh. one hundred thousand. Uh-huh. and he's like the penguins are approaching <laughs> <laughs> so funny and thank god alfred has developed a penguin jamming software i know and they use the same software they used to jam the microphones <laughs> earlier oh man yeah alfred uh, disrupts the signal batman is got a lock on where penguin is in his lair uh-huh. and i love that after the penguins get turned back around and the penguin realizes that batman's coming for him he looks and all the goons are leaving oh yeah that's a great shot of the, them just sort of funnier than the woman just fading into the black that, yes <laughs> so, so wild the funny. light goes out and she just backs away into the darkness uh-huh and i love that penguin realizes he's like i'm all alone fuck Batman's on the way. I gotta get out of here. This is what I was talking about earlier. The rubber ducky being revealed to be a fucking tank uh-huh. that can go upstairs. Oh my god, it's so fucking fun. Look, this was the final boss uh-huh. in the in the Genesis game. Uh-huh. Like the, the, it's so funny. The, the reveal too that it's got wheels and a motor uh-huh. and just Danny DeVito in this thing going up the stairs and he's like bouncing around in the seat. It's so fucking funny. Uh, God, it's so funny. Yeah, the reveal of when he, the camera zooms out Mm -hmm. and every penguin has surrounded them. This is Uh, where I wrote down Oops All Penguins. Oops All Penguins. I love it. It's so, the miniature work too of the zoo blowing up. Oh my God. Because they start firing the little rockets off and yeah. Yeah, I'm a little confused by this. So Batman has this little device that seems to be drawing the penguins back. But when DeVito presses the button on it, that makes them all fire their rockets. But it also releases a bunch of bats from the back of the Batmobile. Yep. 
Uh, whatever. <laughs> sure, why not? But yeah, Penguin falls to the glass and to the water, but it's a rough fall. Yeah. Like, the stunt the stunt work is really good. It's really good. Yeah, I, I buy that this kills him, basically. Oh, we didn't mention, Max is in a, sh- is in a cage <laughs> down below. He gets the key for the cage from the organ grinder, and Catwoman's torn suit, man, at this point, it's, it's really good. It looks awesome. This is when I like the suit the most. It's I love awesome. this design. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one last thing, Batman, yeah. to, to, to really make this comparison, Batman comes down stairs, sees Catwoman got Shrek there, and then she rips her mask off because he calls her Selena, uh-huh. and then uh, one more Trump comparison, oh, fucking boy. Mag Shrek sees her and goes, Selena Kyle, you're, you're fired. fired. And Bruce Wayne, <laughs> why are you dressed like Batman? <laughs> okay, I thought the, the penguin goon earlier, the uh, penguin, I thought that might be the funniest line, this might be the funniest line. It's really good. Because he is Batman, you moron. <laughs> I also love this shot, this reverse shot of... Cut, it cuts away from him with the eye shadow still on, and yep. then when it cuts back, the eye shadow is gone, yep. so he can rip off the mask. Yep. Yeah, I mean this this is all so good, and then I I, I this is Keaton's best part of the movie is oh when he delivers God, this yes. this monologue about like we can go home together. Yeah. I also love when he goes up to Max and just goes like, "Shut up, you're going to jail." Yeah. <laughs> so yep. good. When she when she says uh, because he is Batman, he goes was, was. <laughs> and shoots him. Yeah. <laughs> now he's decided, oh, I'm gonna kill Batman, yeah. even though I have not had a beef with him yet yes it's so good uh bruce's colonel tom parker moment where he says we are the same yes yes (laughs) oh dear child we are the same oh i guess we should say this is your pick for for this week and we're at the end of the movie basically here do you want to kind of recap it real quick sure absolutely uh so uh batman and selena uh he, he tries to convince selena to come home with him to to give up this crusade against Max, let Max face the law the correct way. Selena decides in a truly bonkers shot, but I love so much, to uh, electrocute them both to death uh, by connecting their lips in a kiss, mm-hmm. which is a weird weird choice, but uh, really great. Using the taser, Batman is able to find Max's dead body, but not Selena's. The penguin attempts to kill Batman, but has picked the wrong umbrella. <laughs> That's so funny. God. Shit. I got a cute cute one. (laughs) Uh, The penguin bleeds to death. Like that. This shot, uh, this scene of the penguin emerging from the water oh. and just gushing black bile and blood from his mouth. He comes out of the water like fucking Jason Voorhees. He it's does. so fucking It's scary. terrifying. And the shot of him and then the penguins decide to have a little funeral procession for him. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. And dragging his face on the concrete right. down into the water. Oh, The shot underwater of his face Ooh. as he like sinks to the bottom is haunting. Again, it's a fucking Jason shot. Yeah. Like, it's so scary. <laughs> Cut to later that evening, I think. Alfred is driving Bruce home. Alfred doesn't even know what to say. Mm-hmm. Bruce thinks he sees Selena shadow in the alleyway. And he runs into the alley and finds one of her cats and takes it in. And in a truly... <laughs> hysterical line mm-hmm. uh they say merry christmas to each other and he says uh, he and alfred say merry christmas to each other and he says goodwill toward men and women mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> he says it like oh wow i am a feminist now yeah, like, he's like i've learned something today uh-huh. <laughs> and the bat signal lights up the sky but the person who answers the call seems to be Catwoman, oh. who stands up and is revealed to be alive in a uh, reconstituted suit oh my god and a, and a hell of a final shot that was accomplished by they built an animatronic michelle pfeiffer because she wasn't available for that one shot Instead of just doing a body double. Oh, and that's why it costs so much money, right? Yeah. Yeah. That shot costs like what? Like $250,000 or something, something like that? Something like that. Yeah. It's the best shot of any Batman movie. It's real good. It's not even Batman in the shot. It's fucking Catwoman, but that is the best shot. It's really good. It- it uh it was meant to lead into a Batman Returns or a, a Catwoman uh, standalone film written by Daniel Waters, mm-hmm. which had like a the 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 script is since leaked online and it has a very like the boys R rated uh superhero parody style to it. Uh, I don't know. I I feel like you could do a Catwoman movie. I mean, this basically is a Catwoman movie. Yes. So. Yeah. It's more of a Catwoman movie than a Batman movie for sure. So there's there's tons to talk about here at the end. Yeah. The, the, he shoots. Batman and he shoots Selena Kyle a couple of times. Again, she survives a bunch of bullets to her. Four, five, still alive. Six. The, when the six, seven, all girls go to heaven. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so it's real good. It's so ominous and creepy, but also like terrifyingly haunting. Uh-huh. And so he, she, he has at that point, sh- she has seven lies, quote unquote. 
And then she, uh, yeah, as you said, she grabs hold of a, a electrical cable, puts the taser to both of their lips, uh-huh. and then electrocutes him. To- I love it. It's another one of those things where I'm like, I don't know that I understand this from a character perspective at all, mm-hmm. but I, it is w- such an incredible vi- visual. But I, I do. Really? So what, what, what does it make sense to you? I don't feel like she'd ever fucking kiss Max on the, fa- on the mouth. But, but she doesn't. That's the whole, it's a quote unquote kiss of death, That's right? True. But she, You're right. she's not actually physically kissing him. Right. That's that's true. And I feel like it makes a lot of sense. The taser is a weapon that she got earlier in the movie anyway. Uh-huh. It kind of looks like a cat. She's always being sexualized out this whole movie. So sure. she's finally going to kiss someone. And guess what happens? They fucking die. I do. That's yeah. And then because of that, quote unquote, she dies again. That's her eighth life. She literally has one life left. Sure. Right. And the fact that he can't find her body afterwards, it like signifies that. So I'm like. I don't know. Uh, from a character standpoint, from uh, you know, uh, symbolism, I think it all works well. Like oh, I like that. Yeah, the one guy that she that actually got her quote unquote is dead. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I love it. I think it's fucking terrifying. It's beautifully shot. Like it's it looks so good. Yeah, so good. And there's something really great about this movie. Never explaining the supernatural elements of that. Sure. Like it's just. She did it. And there's no way she physically could have lived through all the shit she lived through in this movie, uh-huh. but she does. And I love that it's never explained. And the yeah, the penguins coming on the line and says, I'll murder you momentarily. <laughs> oh, shit. I picked a cute umbrella. Ice cold water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really good. And then, yeah, the cat that Bruce rescues at the end of the movie, is that supposed to be the same Miss Kitty that she talked to earlier? I think it is. Okay. I mean, it makes sense, but this is the first time I ever kind of put that together. So, maybe. Which is funny because that's the one she said, oh, you're out always having little sexual escapades and not telling me. Uh (laughs) It's really good. Yeah. Come what may, Merry Christmas. What a great last couple lines here. Yeah. It's really good. It's good stuff. Yeah, man. What a baller fucking way to end the movie. The shot with a bad signal of Catwoman and that Danny Elfman score ramping like. Yeah. The march kicking back in. It's so good. It it, it leaves me wanting so much more and that that I don't don't get, which is a good thing. Right. Like it's a good thing to end your movie wanting more like that. And it's not a sequel setup. It's not even a cliffhanger really. It's just that Batman survived and so did Catwoman. Like, it's great. It's fucking great. And yeah, that's Batman Returns. Bless. Uh, do we miss anything that you wanted to talk about? No, we actually hit all of my notes. Same. Like, you know, like I, I just, I had so much that I wanted to talk about. And I feel like we really, we really did like pick it apart. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. For two hours, we talked about yeah, this. <laughs> we're, we're closing in on the length of the movie. Uh huh. Well, we're going to go long, but let's go ahead and get going then. Uh-huh. Let's start talking about Prop Cop. And for new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where we look at all the props in the movie Batman Returns, and we pick one for ourselves. Nathan, this is your pick, so I'll let you go first. What prop do you want from the movie? I want the newspaper that says Batman blows it. Oh, that's good. That's good. I I had a couple I wrote down. Uh-huh. Like I I kind of wanted the batch of toxic waste that looks like the secret of the ooze. <laughs> sure. Speaking of that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce's aquarium with the secret switch in it I thought was really cool. But then the practicality of that just got to suck. You got to roll your sleeve up every time, your arms wet. <laughs> sure. I, I even like the little mini Batmobile like that joker uses that we talked about the little kmart ride the penguin yeah, oh what did i say you said the joker oh i'm sorry yes the the, the penguins <laughs> yeah little batmobile it feels like a joker bit though right it does a little bit but i ultimately went with the umbrella that's also a flamethrower yeah that's good <laughs> When, when he first meets Shrek and he's showing off all his different umbrellas and that one comes out. I almost went with the hypnosis umbrella. Uh-huh. And he's like, it's not working for me. It'll give me a splitting headache. Yeah. Oh, that was really good. Yeah. All right. Well, what about bit part? I know we kind of talked about it, but uh-huh. for uh, those who don't know, bit part is where we recast one of the extras in the movie as ourselves, uh-huh. preferably a no-named character, maybe even one or two lines, but just something in the background, just a bit part, you know? So I do think we would be the two guards. Mm-hmm. You'd be the one who's says that you don't know whether to open fire or fall in love and yep. I'm the one who complains about how much money I'm making. Yep. But if I had a backup, mm-hmm. uh, I would want to be the fat clown that gets shot. <laughs> oh my god, yes. It's good. The one that's like, oh, a penguin? Uh, uh, killing kids. Killing kids is a little... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The the shot of him just staring blankly at the penguin is yeah. so funny to me. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, that was uh that was initially my first pick, uh-huh. but I I'm tossed up between two here. Between I kind of want to be the guy that's like when the woman's like he looks like a frog th- more than a prince that became a prince. <laughs> no, he's more like a penguin. I I kind of want to be that guy, but I also kind of want to be the fucking devil. Uh huh. <laughs> 
I think I think I'm gonna go with the devil, uh-huh. just because it's ridiculous. But I also get a scene with the Batman. He sets me on fire. Uh-huh. I get some cool shit to do. Great choice. I'm gonna go with the literal devil. In this movie. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, the whole reason we're here, yes, the whole point of the show, uh, we're gonna find the silver lining to Batman Returns. What do you got? Nobody is controlling Selena anymore. Perfect. This whole movie, she is stuck between wanting to be with Bruce, hoping to be a better person for him, Mm -hmm. or wanting revenge against Max Shrek, wanting revenge against Batman, hating the Penguin. At the end of this movie, she is allowed to go off on her own and make her own way. Yeah. That's a that's a perfect ending. Mine was that the mayor, who seemed like a relatively good guy, is definitely getting reelected next campaign <laughs> season. <laughs> sure. Like, there's no question. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I'm just thinking about now. Uh-huh. This would have set up so perfectly for a third movie. Yeah. Because, like, the, fo- the follow would be Chip's dad's dead. He becomes a villain of some kind. Whatever sure. villain you want to make him, because that just makes sense. Catwoman could come back as, like, a third act reveal. Yeah. Maybe the mayor tries to run for reelection, and then a up-and-coming Harvey Dent runs against against him you i would tell you if you if that sounds good to you you should check out uh, it's out now in hardcover but batman 89 is a com- uh, comic book miniseries that oh. came out this year that is uh written by sam ham who wrote batman 1989 mm-hmm. and illustrated by uh dc comic superstar joe canones mm-hmm. it ba- it picks up where this movie leaves off oh okay and sort of incorporates design elements of the first two burton movies and batman the animated series mm-hmm. and follows basically the the sort of class divides in gotham city introduces a new take on robin and follows uh harvey dent's descent into becoming two-face who was drawn to look like billy d williams oh. like it it rules. Oh, speaking of uh, of Robin, we didn't even mention Robin was supposed to be in this movie. Played by Marlon Wayans, right? Mm-hmm. And apparently he's still, uh, he, he got as far as like screen testing and getting the outfit and everything. Yeah. And at the last minute they chose not to, which I think is smart, not because Marlon Wayans, but because this movie is already overstuffed as it is, having Robin in there. There is, yeah, he was paid, he was basically paid out of his contract for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was an action figure that came out when this movie came out of Robin. Mm. Uh, and I, I had it as a kid. And it was credited as like a Tim Drake Robin action figure, mm. but he kind of has like almost dreads. Oh. Like so they they literally like recolored the figure to be a white kid. Oh. Uh, but it, it's as close as we will get to seeing what Robin would have looked like on the big screen at this time. I wonder if there's images out there of him in the sc- in the costume. There has to be, right? I, as far as I know, none of them still exist, which which seems impossible, right? Yeah, I mean, just like even like just images of him in the costume during the screen test, right? Like, I mean, we still have all those photos of Nick Cage, right? Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. My other silver lining was kind of a uh, like a, a more meta one, uh-huh. which is uh, both Burton and Keaton saw the writing on the wall and got the fuck out of Dodge before Batman Forever. Uh-huh. So, oh, I'm sorry that that action figure did not have dreads; it had a fade. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this looks like a mock-up that this right here, yeah. which I don't think is real. But may- I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. That that looks more like Schumacher era stuff. Uh huh. I don't know. That's 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 a weird story. Right. You know, what could have been. Um, well, how about this? How about if people watch Batman Returns and because it's such a scary movie for a kid's movie, <laughs> sure. they may need another movie to double feature with it to uh, hopefully re- like, you know, put them in a better mood at the end of this one. Uh-huh. So what is a movie people should pair with this? What is a pick me up alternative to Batman Returns? Well, you know, I always say Snow Dad's better than No Dad. <laughs> and I think oh, uh, no. oh, if, no. you're, if you're still in the Michael Keaton holiday spirit, oh, why don't no. you just head on over and watch Jack, Jack Frost? Frost. Of course. Oh, you poor souls if you ever do that. <laughs> so here's the thing. I had one and then I thought of a brilliant one this morning. So okay. I'm going to tell you my first choice here, yeah. but it's not my official pick. So I thought if you want another movie about a vigilante-esque guy in a suit uh-huh. that's taking out corrupt CEOs, watch RoboCop. Hell yeah. But I thought of a somehow a movie that is way more fitting. Like if you identify with... Uh, the penguin in this movie and you want to watch another movie about a deformed guy trying to find his parents who are absolute assholes and who literally threw him away uh-huh. you should watch Joe Dirt <laughs> <laughs> I got the poo on me uh huh uh, uh, unlimited poon tank <laughs> <laughs> man yeah so there you go great choice watch Joe Dirt 
All right. Well, I think I know the answer already, but Nathan, do you recommend this movie? 100%. Mm-hmm. It is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. It's really, I, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated. I, I was so excited to to watch this with Ashley because uh, I've probably for the same reason you were to watch it with Priscilla, where like, <laughs> how does someone who's never has no like concept of what this movie is, how does someone receive it now? Right. Mm-hmm. And it was a blast. Mm-hmm. I got to say, I think it is a it's a perfect group watch too oh like it my just, god yes it was like for a saturday afternoon i could not have like dreamed of a better movie to watch uh-huh. <laughs> just a little toasty on the couch it's it keeps giving like yeah. it's a movie that if it's got scary stuff it's got funny stuff it's got cool stuff it's just i don't know it's like i gotta say it's the one i revisit the most it's my favorite batman movie i think that is a totally valid pick for favorite batman movie mm-hmm. absolutely and it's my favorite catwoman my favorite batman score sure. like it's as much as i love the batman and the dark knight trilogy and all that stuff i would just really love another one like this uh-huh. i really would and i don't think i'm gonna get it i had to back up while we were watching it because i started just like comparison shopping copies of the soundtrack on vinyl because uh-huh. i was just like i fucking this is so good uh-huh. it's so good yeah and it feels like a complete movie. Uh-huh. Like and there's, even though the plot is kind of thin, like it, <laughs> it ends. When it ends, it ends. And it's all of a piece with itself yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I could, I completely agree. It, it feels like a, the natural progression from 89. Yes. Uh, well, all right. If you haven't, you know, if you've got feedback, listener, and you want to let us know what your thoughts on Batman Returns, you can email us at the Silverliners playlist at gmail.com and uh, we might read it on the show. If you want, you can also DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, if you haven't already, give us a follow on those two, as well as on TikTok. If you want to see highlights from the show, uh, participate in some polls every now and then we have or see some behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. If you want, you can also go over to our Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. There's a, a whole wiki of information there. You can also discuss the movies with us and other people. You can uh, give us a suggestion for a movie you think we should cover on the show and we can consider it. And yeah, just tell your friends and family if you haven't already subscribed, rate, feedback, all the good podcast stuff. And uh, yeah, that's that's Batman Returns from 1992. Now, next week, where 2022 is over, yeah, we're rolling into the new year, and uh, I got a clue for what we're going to be kicking off the new year with right. uh, on the other side. And that clue is next week, bring your milkshakes, <laughs> or you will have abandoned this podcast! <laughs> you will have abandoned your boys! <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited to revisit this movie. As am I. It's going to be an interesting first movie of the year rewatch. So, well, without further ado, rest in peace, Oatmeal. And I'll say this to rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. 100%. Like the the greatest. The Batman. Yep. The definitive Batman. Yep. Yeah. My Batman forever. Absolutely. And not Batman forever. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, listeners, we'll see you in the new year. And as always, burn, baby, burn. God, perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Excelsior! 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 Oh. Look it up! up another fantastic episode of the silver linings playlist if you would be so kind we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did plus a like and subscribe we'll be back next week with another great episode see ya